What's up, guys? How's it going? How is everybody doing? Stupid fucking studio. Hold on. Pop out chat. Alright, there we go. Jesus, man. Alright, there we go. So, DJ Aftershock with the two. Nice to see Microsoft has its priorities right. That's right, man. You gotta punish people for playing games that you sell on your own platform, apparently. It's fucking retarded. But it's Microsoft, and they love making retarded decisions. What happened with Insomniac? Basically, there's this, uh... <laughs> there's a video that leaked a while back. I just saw it, though, for the first time today. And it's, like, an inclusivity study from them. So it's, like, literally their fucking internal propaganda video about diversity... So, we'll take a look at that. Griffin, Judaism is not compatible with Christianity. You're a paid shill or Jewish if you say that. Maybe I'm both. Would that be a problem? Yeah, Jews are of the devil, then I guess Jesus is the devil, too. Uh, Botto size of the two, what's the deal with Boogie begging Keem? Uh, that's old as shit, man. That was just because Boogie fucked up and went on someone else's podcast instead of saving it for his own. But that's old. See, you generation with the five, Starfield one, most innovative gameplay on Steam Awards. Hey man, nobody does loading screens quite like them. You know, they uh, reinvented the way we look at loading screens, so gotta give them credit. Let's see. Jesus was born in the USA. That's right. He and Trump are the two greatest Americans. All right. <laughs> Griffin, look at that. It's Suicide Squad. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, it's gone. No. What a shame. Yeah, they want you to pre-order, which I'm sure pre-orders are pretty fucking low if they're having to pay for a home screen advertisement. My most viewed videos, Griffin saying the N-word. What did I say, neighbor? Fucking exposed, bro. What a shame. It's not my proudest moment, guys. Griffin was on that list? I told y'all I used to work on Air Epstein for a little extra side cash, and it was nice because I used to meet really famous people. Time to move.
Did I get a lot of tips? Uh, figuratively and literally. Sold his soul. Who? Who? I didn't get the check. Yeah, basically some dude was playing Baldur's Gate 3. He recorded the sex scenes with the elf or whatever the fuck. And Microsoft banned him for over a year. They gave him nine strikes on his account for one fucking gameplay clip. Because he recorded a sex scene with the elf character. <laughs> fucking wild, man. Stick of hell. Let's wrap this up. Yeah, if they allow the game on their platform, then I don't know why the fuck they're uh, freaking out over someone using a fucking built-in feature of the console to record. I feel like that should be lawsuit territory. He got the appeal, but for sure it wouldn't have happened if he had not gained traction on his Reddit post. Exactly. It's like when Xbox tried to fuck me with my uh, broken console, and the only reason they fixed it is because I bitched about it on social media. This is what I... Like, people who think Microsoft is their friend, I think it's fucking hilarious. Because it's like, bro, there's not a more soulless, I don't give a fuck about you company out there than fucking Microsoft.
So I, I just find that hilarious that people think Phil Spencer is their personal friend. It's like, are you fucking shitting me? Like, why the fuck are you banning people for content that's on your console? Don't sell the content if you don't want it on your console. But that's right, dude. Bill Spencer played Halo Infinite with me. He can't do anything wrong. Phil Spencer's one of us, guys. He's just a gamer like you and me. Twenty twenty four is Microsoft's year, just like 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023 was supposed to be. Can't wait, man. Not Naya with the two. What is with the Microsoft? Well, I just explained that. Uh, Will with the two. God forbid someone wants some spank material for later. Yeah, it's like, I don't understand why would you release the game on your console if you don't want people using your console to fucking record the game. It makes no sense. It's retarded. Shoot! Sure. Uh. 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 
This is almost easier, this one. Alright, so that's done. Cool. For Kenzie with a two, Phil isn't a gamer, no woman. And yeah, I'm not saying that. Good luck. I ain't falling for that one, bro. I wish you luck in your other baiting endeavors, but I will not be falling for that. Bring it on. There we go. <clears throat> no, I can't wish a happy birthday to Nick. Why'd you save me? I was asked to keep you safe. By lightning. You should play Shadow the Edgehog after this. I don't know, man. Sorry. Maybe you should, uh... Open your wallet and give me all of your monies! I put her in Bill danger. Clinton likes them young? That's right. That. Let me make things right. You told me before that Well, he was could. getting that gluck luck in the fucking yeah, Oval Office, bro, by the end a lot of so. other things I shouldn't have said. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to set things straight. So I didn't. I thought if I couldn't make up for it, then all the apologies in the world wouldn't mean a thing. So I decided I had to find a way to pay for it first, before I'd even have the right to say sorry. But it's like you said, I was using that as an excuse so I could run from my own guilt. Bill took 50 flights to the island. Yo, he and Bill Gates must have uh, flown over to the island. Look, Hope. I know what happened was my fault. I don't deny it, and I am sorry. Here. That's lights, isn't it? I... Why'd you... That knife was a present from Sarah to keep her safe. She trusted you with something that important. You should be the one to carry it. I'll I will find never a way to make Bill things Clinton better. was impeached. He's Just one of the only time. presidents to ever be impeached. But the thing Nothing is, impeachment is does enough. not mean that you get removed from office. It just means you're guilty of a crime. Getting your dick sucked by an intern gone, and sir. concealing it is not exactly what I would you consider worth kicking someone out of the Oval Office it will bring over. Her Who back. fucking cares? I'm sorry. He got impeached for wrong. obstruction of justice. That's it. Like, it was some it bullshit. Back. Like, bruh. The Bill Clinton stuff is not someone. a big deal when it comes to the impeachment. Like... That's just a bunch of, like, pearl-clutching retards that were upset over that, sorry. Reason. Like, why are we concerned about playing. who's sucking Wasn't another man's dick? Fault. Like, I don't give a fuck. Take it out on me. And keep yourself alive until you do. 
Look at that. You don't even need any help. You're all right. That's good to see. Just let me catch my breath. Oh, fuck me in the ass. Always the hero. You want to die? Fuck me in the ass, bro. You can't. I won't let you. Stop right there, dude. I'll stop you. Bruh, what more? I'm guessing this is when he gets a summon, right? They really want me to... Yeah, it's one of these scripted sequences. Not bad, kid. Where's Snow? He's okay. Sure you're up to this? Thing will never know what hit it. Diversity is our strength. Thank you. Careful now. Jeez. Time for a change. Shitty fucking class setups. So I don't have a sentinel and a healer, which is kind of necessary. Alright, let me see if I can edit them. Yeah, here we go. So I need...
All right, I think that should be good. Just make sure. So yeah, I have two medics in the same room. All right, that's what I want. Not bad, kid. Where's Snow? He's okay. Sure you're up to this? Thing will never know what hit it. Two party members, it's like I'm playing the beginning of the game again. Yeah, somebody bought Epstein's Island. I don't remember who it was, but yeah, it got auctioned off. I mean, it's like a fully developed private island, so those don't typically hang around. good class setup now. I actually feel powerful for the first time in a long time. Oh shit, his stagger meter went away.
There we go. This motherfucker has a lot of health. Jesus. Alright, let's go. Last round of attacks. There we go. Damn, man. Alright, four stars. I'll take that. That's not bad. Who's the best romance for Mass Effect 2? Uh, like, if you're going for achievements, then Miranda. But, um, you know, you can romance other Nora. people as well, but they don't count. Didn't work out. Oh, oh, my. You'll be okay. I'll keep you safe. Lightning. I... It should have been me! me I mean, at least I'll try. I'll try to watch out for you two. <laughs> yeah, he should have slapped her ass when he had the chance. Don't forget about this one. <laughs> that one will be all right. <sighs> He's too stubborn to die. Yeah, Miranda's the one with the ass shots Knowing in the skin tight bodysuit with her fucking no cheek crevice in full display. That's what having a home is all about. This. Yeah, neither is Liara. She's not in your party either. I Seller with the five. We'll check it out, man. And Rick Rod with the five. YouTube is at it again. Blocking my video requests. At least you get my shekels. Hell yeah, dude. I like shekels. Shekels are preferred. Aren't shekels worth like 20% of a dollar or something like that? They're not worth very much. <clears throat> oh. But then again, the cost of living in Israel is like dirt cheap. So. M Mom's gone. Mom's gone, but I brought you some bad bitches. Wait, hold on. How did he not know that his fucking wife was dead when she got purged in the early part of the game? That makes no sense. Dad, I... Uh... I, I know. Come on, man. I'll be in my room. <laughs> I'll be in my room playing Minecraft. Hell yeah, dude. Why is then he going to his room? Then we'll leave. If they find out you're sheltering with C, they'll... 
You're my son. This is your home. My son. Looks expensive. Oh shit. Yeah, he's definitely gonna bag the Neil, bro. Hell yeah. He's got money like that. Alright, let's use my CP. Um Sentinel. Pothead investor with the two. What is this? And so tell me. They got my dick pic. What the fuck? All right, we'll take a look at it then. Uh, Rick Rod with the two video requests in my next comment. All right, I didn't see it the first time, man. It did not come through the first time. Now for an update on the situation in Palampolum. The Lassi continue their desperate flight, and the military has now launched an all-out campaign to eliminate them. In the event you must leave your home, please follow the instructions broadcast on this channel. Must be the kid's family. Oh, really? Wow, how observant of her. 2,500 civilians believed to have come in contact with the Lassi are now being held in quarantine by the Sanctum. Our latest Instapol has shown a vast majority in favor of the immediate purging of these individuals, hey. believing their treatment... Lay down. Purge them. All right. See, you took the kid's toy away. Uh, he gave it back to me. Said he didn't need it anymore. <laughs> Go figure. It was too much. What's up, puppy dog? Mm -hmm. What happened to Sarah? All I could think about was what could I have done? I hated myself for not trusting her. It hurt too much. I couldn't face it. See, Oski Woski with the five. Bye, Brit. Mute Brit. All right. Look, Snow. R.I.P. Brit. I'm sorry. Forgive me. For what? Everything. If you told me your real name, I suppose I could. <laughs> Have Sarah tell you. When she comes back. Deal. Aw, how sweet. My dad said he'd like to see you guys. He wants to talk. dad wants to talk to you dude I'd say fuck off bro I can't afford this shit the 
blame is mine. Dog, what the fuck? He ain't gonna hit it from behind, Snow. Jesus. Uh, if it wasn't for Snow, I wouldn't be here right now. Snow. Did Nora. Have I seen what Digital Foundry said about Project you? Eve? That what? The design looks dated no. because she's sexually attractive? She said to get him home. And that's exactly what you've done. <sighs> the Grizz with the 40. Oh, shit. Final Fantasy 15 review face -face BTS like adventure by Maxor. I heard you like Final dangerous. Fantasy, and for someone who hated it, I hope you enjoy Maxor's review death, on it. See? Thoughts on Scarlet Nexus? No, not even just uh, I think I, let me see if I own that. I think I own that. I just haven't played it. Let me. That sounds familiar. Let me see. But I haven't played it, but I think I own it. Where would it be? Um, yep, I do own it. But yeah, I haven't Me played it yet. Helped you. Bumped into you. I heard decent things about it. Like, it's Sometimes actually one of the few uh, just people who JRPGs that has, like, actual combat, not just turn-based. So I picked it up for, like, I think five urged. or six bucks at one point. The Sanctum's a puppet of the foul sea. FBI to with them, the two. So why was the dad at home and not with his family? Because, dude, he's based. Take down Getting groceries is for women. You thought that through? If Lassie take down the Sanctum, fear of Pulse will only get worse. It won't stop at fear. What the People fuck is the thumbnail? It's a good thumbnail. What do you mean? You. What's Can wrong with it? Imagine it. The rampant violence. When the government's control is gone, the citizens will revolt. So what then? We're supposed to just smile and eat a bullet. That means you too. Huh. I know I'm part of this. I'm on your side of the fence. Harbor of the sea and a public enemy. It's MJ being blacked by Venom. What's wrong with that, dude? Was a bad idea. You racist? <laughs> this is your home. We're all God, here. He dropped it. What a Let's fucker. figure this out together. Huh? <sighs> Griffin, dude, the voice acting here is so much better than modern anime. They all just sound like they've inhaled helium now. I want the Days of Black Lagoon level dubs to come back. Well, the problem is, is you know, anime, the demographic is now appealing towards autistic pedophiles. Unfortunately, so they all have to sound like literal fucking children to get, you know, the weaves look like little Jimmy's rustled. That's why I'll never understand the appeal of hentai, bro. It literally sounds like they're trying to sound like they're eight years old. It's fucking disgusting. Help my dad. Come on. Yeah, when it comes to lightning, I'm gonna ravage. Turn the tide. Appreciate it. Got your back. Thanks. I'll deal with you. Come wrap this up.
so much better when you have three people in your party. You don't have to like play super fucking slow and boring. Thank you. ourselves in here they're not gonna just give up and go away that's the point all right i need to spend my uh cp real quick Time to cash in all the CP I've been storing up. Yeah, it is kind of sad though, bro. I've like unironically enjoyed playing through this game way more than pretty much anything I played last year. Even for all of its issues, like having to play as fucking Hope or uh, Saz, but, you know. Even then, I've still enjoyed this game more so than pretty much anything last year. Other than maybe like Super Mario Wonder. But I like the story of this game personally. I think the setting's really cool. Triple A games I look forward to are Yak. Would do you even consider Yak as a triple A? I consider that the more be double A. But I don't know. Yakuza, I would say, is more double A, which is probably why it's good. They don't weigh it down with an over heavy production budget. Just because it's one of their biggest franchises doesn't mean it's like triple A. Like Minecraft wasn't triple A and it was a massive success. So. I can't wait until Griffin reaches Grand Pulse. For me, it's Pulse Nightclub, but you know. Potato, potato, right? I need to make a class with the two uh, commando classes. But I'll see what my class name is. Like. Oh, 
Oh, nice. A farming spot. Final Fantasy 7 Remake is by the Final Fantasy 13 team. Yeah, that's why the combat system is kind of like a good mix between like Final Fantasy 15 and like the traditional turn base. Is because you still have like an actual like active input element. It's not just, you know, fucking menu scrolling. I just like actually enjoy interacting with the game in real time. Like, I don't just want to sit there and menu scroll. The only like turn-based RPG I've traditionally really liked is like the Pokemon games, but those aren't even really what I would consider to be real RPGs. They're pretty fucking bare bones. And the battles are super quick. Yeah, this game is so much better when you have more than two party members. Three. Two is like really cancerous because you're constantly just having to spam swap. Final Thanks. Fantasy 16 is very fun. good. Your son's a tough kid. Sorry, it was me. We'll take out the whole building next. Dad! Hope! Thank goodness. Are you hurt? No. How about you? Still in one piece. Why'd he take his shirt off? Hell yeah, dude. Okay, never mind. His hand would be cooked, but yeah. I'll show you what a Lassie looks like. I don't. 
What if he's telling you it's a trick? You must be Snow Villiers. He, maybe he's right, dude. Yag Roche, Psycom Division. Uh oh, Psyop. I understand. Flaws Mystery of the 50. This entire However, game is funny because the, the Japanese hate so tattoos. Yep. The very, very true. existence of Ulysses puts every last one of us in danger. Tell me, do you really think your life is worth more than the lives of millions of cocoon citizens? I Maybe. Not. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't give a fuck and if so a million random it people falls died. To me to order your I would choose my life. It's that simple. It is my responsibility to see you put down. Your lives are forfeit. Oh, cut the crap! You want the sea? Then kill the sea! Why do other people have to die? The purge has got to stop! Do you think we want to purge our own people? If any trace of Pulse remains, the populace will erupt into chaos! Without sacrifice, without the purge, Cocoon will die. Drag out! I gave no order! No. your dad we threatened you and forced you to help us got it there must be something do else. what she says yeah shut up <clears throat> cry white boy hmm. I can't let you get dragged into this I want to stay here but there's no place for Alyssi I'm going with the others we'll survive somehow I promise you that. Dad, I hate to run out on you. You're not running! This is not running away. You've made a choice. You'll survive and do what needs to be done. You mean... complete my focus? Don't you worry about that. You make the choice. <laughs> Bro, they better not kill Aerith in the remake. That's all I can say. They better kill Tifa off. You know, Miss Balloon Chest is not really going to be missed, in my opinion. The only problem will be killing Tifa off will hurt the marketing of the third game because, you know, all the fucking coomers are going to be like, No, big boobies! My ooga booga boobas. Our turn, hero. What? I can handle a little gas. Catch your breath. I'll throw in some hits for you.
Oh, that's right. You gotta take out the turret. Shit. This is one of those fucking machine bosses. Bible study with Griff Camp, dude. Where are y'all gonna get me started on now? Communism goes against a lot of the principles in Judaism. So. Griffin is a fake Christian, that's right. According to YouTube comments. Surrender now. Yeah, marriage is good. 
good from a like governmental level just for taxes. Griffin is a fake grifter. He's only pretending to be one. That's right. I'm a terrible grifter if that's what I'm going for, honestly. Like, if I was actually trying to drift, I'd be, like, one of the most unsuccessful drifters on the platform. Like, I do all the shit that no drifter should do. I don't just blindly defend the one particular side in most places. Anyone can get the smoke, bro. There's no protector classes on the screen, to be honest. I don't fucking Generation with the five. What is this? New York Post. U.S. Boxing Slam for no <laughs> new transgender policy. Hell yeah, dude! We can beat women legally. Nice. Uh oh. The boxing thing became unintentionally based. I'm pretty sure the Bible speaks against gay relationships. Uh, Every religious text on planet Earth for the most part. I'll deal with you. Carter with the two. Is Final Fantasy 13 any good? Yeah, it's good. I like this game better, but it's good. Just make sure you buy the uh, Sarah Bikini DLC if you're gonna play it. Follow my lead. That's a necessity. Yeah, Lightning Returns is really good. The only thing that sucks about Lightning Returns is the time mechanic, but you can kind of cheese it. Just look up how to like, get around it.
Why did she return to kill everybody? Like Bill Gates. Don't get cute. Right, let's move it. Not every game needs to have, like, you know, side quests and towns, to though. I don't have a problem with a linear game, personally. Final Fantasy 16 sure. would have been better if it was linear. The side Whoever content sucked. That this time could be the last. Snow has your dream bod? We'll hit the gym, bro. That's not an unachievable physique, so go for it. That's a pretty realistic physique that Snow has, so... Don't let your uh, dreams be memes. You could very easily achieve that after like two or three years. Would I ever consider doing a Bible related collab Season? with Melanie Mac? Probably not. Nope. I'm fine. Yeah, you are. Okay then. You go from getting to play as three people back to the fucking most miserable duo in the game. Oh, and I have to play as Saz. Are you fucking shitting me? Ew, I want to play as Benil. I don't know who at Square Enix thought anyone would want to play as Saz over Vanille. Like, come on, bro. If I'm going to stare at a character's back, I want to look at, uh, you know, Vanille. Wow, Vanille has a lot of health. Oh, Raze is the revive, right? Alright, that's actually going to be good. Nice. 
I do not want to look at the Chocofro. Yeah, all out of CP, man. It's unfortunate. You run out of CP so quickly these days. It's harder and harder to find, man. It's like somebody's cracking down on, you know, the abundance of CP. It used to be so easy to find, but, you know. Now it feels like I'm just scavenging constantly, looking for any little bit of CP I can use to add to my collection. Ugh. Fucking Obama. It's his fault for everything, bro. Wait, did that guy just say we can read? <laughs> Not a lot of security either. Yeah, for these people. Let's see, I saw that the five Final Fantasy X is a hundred percent linear, no. the same fanboys complained that Final Fantasy oh, thirteen hey. is linear. I remember like, putting, I like it was yesterday. Way. Yup. But it's okay, soon. dude, you get to play as a blonde twink in uh Final we'll Fantasy ten, so it's alright. like the army finally found him hostages king samuel with the five video the suggestion sea. they're all infected by pole or uh, something right now anyway the coffin uh, i'm not watching that shit i had to sit through that fucking awful game bro i ain't watching a video about on to it start. come on let's go i had to sit through that fucking slop i'm not watching somebody else talk about it hell nah Yeah, that shit blew. Because I looked it up and, like, it was like an hour or something. And it ended up taking, like, three. That shit was horrible. It was just boring. There's, I don't know. That, that game, like, people way overhyped it. Like, people are like, oh, dude, he's going to play the game. He's going to play the game. And it's like, okay, I played the game. It was literally nothing except, oh, dude, edgy cannibalism. Whoa. Like, that literally was the entire fucking appeal. It's like, you know, people were like, oh my god, bro, it's so edgy. You get to eat people and shit. Like, and then the incest, quote unquote, was like literally nothing. It was just like some trash tier, like, Twitter headcanon shit. It's like, oh my god, bro, the anime characters are gonna fuck. Like, okay, who cares? Have you never watched anime before? Like, that, that happens all the time. I don't know. It just it wasn't even that good. Like, even from an edgy perspective, it sucked. Hey, loosen up. Gotta Let me see how long the... If it's more than, like, five to ten minutes, right? then I don't know if we'll watch that. <laughs> if it's short, maybe. I we'd be saying goodbye soon. But I mean, the game is, like, fucking smile. two hours. Yeah, 20 minutes? Mm, that's like half of the fucking first chapter. I don't know about that one, bro. A pageant commemorating the war between... A 20-minute video on that shit, I don't think is worth watching. You had to go with a certain choice to get the incest scene. Oh man. CDs. It's party time, little lady. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Hell yeah, dude.
Uh, I'm on chapter eight now. Yeah, but Lay Lay was hot. Dude, it was a fucking drawing. Chill the fuck out. It was like literally 2D art from like a middle schooler. You're free. Here comes the attack from Pulse. Yo, Bahamut with the beard. What was DSP beating his meat to? Uh, probably Sometimes like some, I, I don't fucking know. I think he just said it was some vanilla shit. Could our deaths have brought back peace? He's probably just jerking off to like some fucking, uh, I don't know, like, step bro or, I don't know, dude. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sure DSP has pretty vanilla yeah, taste, man. Play, he doesn't baby. seem like one of those guys that's into like weird <laughs> shit. I'll let you decide. Just keep on smiling. I know. A Nautilus Park Day. With sags. Yeah, but should we really be playing around? Hell Get yeah. Maybe stuff for a while. Then maybe this will just fade away. Okay. Great. Let's roll. I own Jedi Survivor. I haven't played it yet. Griffin is finally back. Back from what? So this is the city of dreams? Will I play it? Play it mm, that's like a good question. As you know, I don't really play video games anymore. Oh, I bought the new Yeezy boots. Those things are fire. I'm probably going to get a second pair as well because I'll probably wear them out. Those look so nice, man. Back to streaming. Uh, I've been streaming, man. I just wasn't on for New Year's because I fell asleep at like 10 p.m. and then woke up at 6. So I just didn't stream that night. What's in Nautilus Park anyway? I bought like a bunch of the easy clothes that are dropping. I got like pants, shorts, the shoes. What else? What else so did I buy? Is this place special? I promised Dodge. It's gonna bring him someday. Hope I can at least tell him about it. You get the chance. Maybe. I do know where they're keeping him. Can I come with you? <laughs> sure. More than yeah, many. I got two pairs of what shorts, two pairs of pants, and two pairs of the shoes. Special? No. <laughs> really? No, 
Now that is kind of sad. Yeah. Hey, I'm kidding. I didn't mean to uh, upset you. Well, I'm just fine, thank you. Yes, you are. I wanted to tell him everything, but I couldn't. Not until the time was right. Squeeze my nuts until they pop. Wait, pause. Dude, chocobos are some of the coolest, like, fantasy creatures to ever exist. Oh, the chocofro's back. <laughs> Somebody's excited. Yeah. Hey, you can make some new friends. Dodge is crazy about chocobos. <laughs> really the sneaker resale market crashed. Yeah, around. well, every resale market's Indeed. down right now. This go. is what's known as a, uh... Shit! I can't think of the term! But it's like the time that you acquire things. A consolidation phase, that's what it is. This is when you should be buying stuff to hold, not trying to sell. Toilet's just like the real thing. Like bro, I'm getting Pokemon Japanese booster boxes for like 40 something dollars in some cases, which is wild. Because they get a fucking brand new Japanese booster box shipped to the US for like under fifty dollars so for the long term bro that shit's gonna be crazy good. You've never seen our spectacular Papa Sancta parade. So I've been buying like a bunch of shit. Welcome to Welcome to RIP Boogie Nah so the thing is with Boogie that he explained I forgot where but his magic collection he's had it for like twenty years. So over the span of 20 years, he's way up. But yeah, if he would have sold it two years ago, he would have been even more up. Oh. Ooh. The smell. Oh. Glad I don't work here. The smell reminded me of home. The wilderness of pulse. Hey, come back here. Boogie is a predator? No. Oh, 
they sell these toys? I'm still holding on to my first edition Charizard card. It's pretty damn good shape. Got to get it graded. You should, man. Yes, one blew the coop. What you should do is, if it great, send it to PSA first. If it gets anything under an eight, what I would do is send it to either BGS or CGC, and you'll probably be able to get it around an eight-ish. The thing is, a CGC is way fucking easier to grade, like, cards that have conditional damage than PSA. Go. So, grade it with PSA first. If it gets a good grade, like an 8 or above, keep it in that. If it gets below an 8, crack it and send it to CGC instead. And see what you get. Most likely, it'll be higher than whatever PSA gives you. And that should uh, maximize your value. Most amiibos are overproduced nowadays. But, I mean, maybe long term it'll be good, but, I mean, for the amount of money you're gonna have to spend and, like, just shipping it, any value appreciation kind of gets destroyed. Like, let's say the amiibo doubles and it goes up to $26. You can sell it for 26, then after fees you'll get 22, then you'll have to pay 4 bucks to ship it, so then you'll get 18. So in the time that it takes for that to double, you can make 5 bucks. So just think about it that way. You're still number one, of course. Of course. The Chocafro. Thanks, Mario. Mm -hmm. Now, when I see Dodge, I can tell him about the Chocobos. Chocobos He's are based by the military. Psycom, you mean? Yeah. Since he's a I Siler, Final Fantasy XII does have a remake. Tests. It's on PS4. To figure out his focus. It's called the Zodiac Age. Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age. It's a remake of uh, XII, pretty much. I'm. Turning myself in. Huh? I know they execute the sea, but hey, they're not total monsters. They'll listen to a final request. They'll have to. Before the end, I want to talk to Dodge one last time. I want to tell him about these chocobos. I want to tell him about everything I've seen. But wait, Sass! Listen, I don't want you to worry. You're not part of this. You'll have plenty of time to split before I surrender. <sighs> That's not what I meant. I'm sorry, Vanille. Ah, <sighs> I'm just... I'm tired of all this running. <laughs> but... Dude, I have a really fucking sick you Chocobo can't. card from the Final Fantasy card game. What about Dodge? Huh? It's a let's see because of someone from Pulse. You can't give up without getting revenge. <sighs> I know who it is. I know who's responsible for the accident. The accident at Uriday. Then tell me. It was me. The lassie who ruined your life was. Huh. <laughs> Final Fantasy cards, worth if you like them, yeah. Where'd they come from? 
I mean, they're not like super fucking valuable like Pokemon cards, but you know, some of them are worth quite a bit. My Tifas are very expensive. I have like a couple $1,000 plus Tifa cards. No place left to run. Yeah, Final Fantasy XI was 360 in PC. That's because you have Jizz free Tifa cards? Yeah, it was really hard to wait until they were great, but I'm glad I did, man. They're worth a lot more now. They're expensive, but no one buys them? Uh, that's not true at all, man. I get outbid on them all the time. This is gonna sting. I mean, if you're looking to sell them for unrealistic prices, then they just sit on these eBay. Sure. You can sell them. Well, considering that the Final Fantasy TCG is only waifus, pretty much, yeah, the waifu tax does apply. I guess I'm thinking of the graded Tifa cards, not the graded ones. They always seem to sell every day, and no one buys them. Yeah, you got to put them up for auction. Like if you're looking to get $1,500 for a graded Tifa card, you can get it. but the thousand-dollar ones or like sub-1,000 typically will sell. I mean, that's the thing is a lot of people just throw shit up on eBay, you know, and they just let it sit there. They don't care because it costs nothing to list an item on eBay. So if somebody buys it, great. If not, then you just hold on to the card. I've done that with a couple cards I have where it's like I don't really want to sell them, but if somebody was willing to pay a certain amount, then I would sell it. So I just put it up there, and then it just brings attention to my you know, profile. something really cool regarding Halo coming soon that I'll show you guys once it arrives, but it's really fucking sweet, man. I'm really excited I picked it up, but yeah. It's something that's gonna look really fucking cool on my uh, eventual wall of virginity once I have room for one.
A Cortana blow-up doll. That won't fit on my wall, but it will on my bed. I've had a Tifa card listed as buy it now for like 1500 bucks for like three or four months now. Well, bro. I mean, unless you're trying to sell it, then... I don't know. Like, what? Are you trying not to sell it, or you just have it up there to see if somebody will buy it? Because the thing is, is I bought a bunch of those Noir Tifas. And, you know... I've done very well on those. Those are like 500 bucks in the 10 now. I got mine for like 40 bucks. Griffin will buy it? No, I have like five of those. Uh, Opus 11. I have plenty of them. I got them for cheap. They're like 200 bucks when I bought them. Decepticon, bro. How much did you put into it? I mean, you can always just put a auction starting at like 700 bucks if that's like, I guess, more than what you put in. That's what I would do. Just start at the bid price at like 700, see if somebody bids on it. I don't know how much you spent on it though. I saw it with the five. We'll check it out, man. She only healing me twice. She has three fucking bars. Oh my god. Oh, you paid seven fifty each. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of tough. Because after fees, you're going to have to sell it for about, what, a thousand just to break even at that point. So yeah, I would just keep it up. Did I show how Spider-Man 2 tried to change the Spanish language in my room? No, I don't play in Spanish, so I would not have known that.
Thank fuck, man. Jesus. Staggered. This is gonna stay. Yeah, you're just probably gonna have to wait until the next, like, TCG uptick, which may be a couple years out, but I mean, if you don't need the money, it's not a big deal. There's worse cards to hold on to than uh, Tifa. Tifa will always be a popular character. So that's the yeah, I saw the video of the Vegas Judge. Danger. <laughs> yeah, bro's sentence just got extended by a lot. See, Kami with the two. Is Sekiro a game you play? In the uh, probably not. I tried to play it a while back. I didn't really play it. It's basically the difficulty of a Souls game with none of the player choice, so it just wasn't fun. Your favorite Final Fantasy female is Lightning? Uh, mine is Aerith. CP. Dude, it costs so much to level up now. Great, we got gas. Let's see if I can stagger him real quick. I'm ready for anything. Yeah. Ah, 
second win. Dude, this is just ass. I owe ya. Dude, this is so funny. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. This is just geez. All right, there we go. got railed by that rail gun dude this is miserable holy shit man am i doing hold on let me look this up real quick what is this thing called midnight reaper holy dude this is taking forever let me make sure i'm doing this right There is no difficulty setting in this game. Holy fuck, a 20 second intro. Yeah, you're not supposed to see anything. Yeah, I don't fucking know, man. It says to buff using... Uh... Do it! 
Yeah, the Neil would have a great ASMR career. I'm actually dealing damage now. I don't care. Well, the thing is, is I didn't get any uh, fucking stars because I didn't know how to fucking beat it at first. Huh? I probably would have gotten stars if I'd used that Daddy, strategy from I the beginning. You. Huh? Oh. <laughs> bruh. <gasps> Daddy, got you. What the fuck, Daddy, bruh? Why are you here? Because you promised. <laughs> but how did you get here? It's like her vibrator intensity shot up as soon as he got close. I'd like to paint those. Focus. 
Dodge fulfilled it admirably and served Cocoon in the process. You should be proud of him. Mr. Catsroy. Uh, uh. Dodge was a great help. He could sense power of Pulse origin. That let us monitor you. Words can express our gratitude. The data he provided on enemy list C was invaluable. And speaking of gratitude, we enhanced the surveillance footage from the energy plant. Those are the pulseless sea behind what happened. The picture's a little grainy, but I'm sure you recognize that one. You spent so much time together. Fang, let's go. What's our focus even matter? What's it matter? You want to be a monster? What's it matter? I just... Uh... Keep your chin up. We know the part that matters. Right? We are enemies of Cocoon. Know what I said? <laughs> I saw there with the two in before. That's the eye siler in the crystal. Just start our memories. What? Uh-oh. Do you have a fro like that? Let's smash it. And I saw it with the five. Any reason why Square struggles financially? There's an obvious pattern since Versus 13 and them complaining about sales. Final Fantasy 7 is at 7 million sold in. The reason they suffer is because they fund a bunch of loser projects. Final Fantasy is one of the few things that actually makes them a lot of money. But the thing is, is they've ditched their whole Western game studio, which I think is kind of smart. I mean, I would have kept Tomb Raider, but... Yeah, a lot of the games they, like, tried to expand into just never worked out. They should have stuck to making RPGs, which... They do pretty good with that, but the problem is, is, you know... RPGs are very niche in comparison to the overall gaming market, so... They want to spend, you know... Hundred million dollar budgets on Final yes. Fantasy, but you know, Final Fantasy is not a billion dollar, you know, a game franchise right now. Ironic, isn't it? The very girl you're protecting is the one who stole your son. Hold. She's too hot to shoot. Shall we finish the job, or would you prefer to? <sighs> Colonel Labatt, what now? Follow them and observe. Dude, I want to slap her fun bags. There's no silicone in the Square Enix game, guys. What's up, Big Paula? What you doing, bud? Did I even try to run? What was waiting wasn't something I could change. If read You are cold blooded. <laughs> Lying. Let me so warm it up for trust you. you. Using them as shields. Alright, guys. I gotta go take my dog out. He's gotta go uh poop. He keeps licking me, so that usually means it's time to squat. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Give me a second.
All right, I'm back, guys. He just needed to pee. Little fucker. Oh, shit. You generation with the 20 gifted memberships. Damn, man. What the fuck? Really appreciate it. Hopefully, Britt didn't get one. Which doesn't look like she's even here, so... Hopefully, that's the case. She didn't? Alright, cool. Hell yeah. There is justice in the How world. How many you gotta drag down with you? I'm... A coward and a killer. The people you use don't get to live. Why should you? No. Tired of living with guilt? Then die with it. Grand Pulse, and to everyone on Cocoon, evil. Shoot me for your son. No. Don't you even. You think you die, and that's that? Mm -hmm. You think you die, and everything will be sugar and rainbows? That's right. Then what can I do? What do you want from me? Drop them draws. If I can't live or die. What do you want me to do? Don't ask me. You figure it out. Get on your hands and knees. I don't know! <laughs> Neither do I. It's over. Let me she them titties. There's nothing to do. Shooting you won't help. Neither will living. If free. Nothing will ever be as good as the Freed song in Final Fantasy XV. The Freed had a very weird design in Final Fantasy XV. What do you want, dog? Uh -uh. Get away. Okay, fine. You want me? Come and get me! It looks like buffing is how you raise the gestalt, yeah. Oh, you're gonna love this.
I owe ya. This is gonna sting. Maybe it's dual casting? Bitch, I don't fucking know. Let's see. I need to make a medic and ravager class. But daddy. All right, yeah, I need to make a medic slash ravager class. All right. Oh, of course I can't make one. Dude, are you shitting me? Oh shit, man. Seriously? All right. to get more aggressive with the time.
love this. I owe ya. This is gonna sting. Shit, I'm not gonna make it. This is gonna sting. I appreciate it. Didn't do enough damage. Okay. Re fucking evaluate. This is AIDS, bro. Oh, I'm gonna have to redo the paradigm again, too. Alright, so what I'm thinking I have to do is I have to buff myself, then. I have to just spam fucking magic and heal every once in a while. Alright, there we go. So, Crystal Air. So definitely want to do Ravager. Okay. It's kind of irritating it doesn't save the CP up Just not enough for HP. Okay. Alright, so now we need to go paradigms, customize. I need Ravager and Medic. And also. Try this. Oh, I forgot to use fucking ammo. Dude, I don't fucking know. I may have to look this up again. This is wild, bro. Alright, I'm almost there. Keep getting knocked out of my attacks. Guess Daddy's not gonna make. 
make it home. Oh my god. Alright, let's look this up. So... Let's see. You can cheese all of these, so it's not hard. Saz has summoned Brynhildr. It can be difficult without a certain few paradigms. Pause and retry the battle to get access to the main menu. You'll want to make a second dual casting paradigm if Saz doesn't have haste, and create yin and yang. Then set tide turner to your active paradigm. Once the battle begins, time is of the essence. Manually cast Vigilance on your party after your attack so your move doesn't get cancelled. This will allow you to interrupt Brynhildr without being interrupted yourself. You'll want to also cast Faith and take a break to use potions if your life gets too low. Cast Haste if you have it, though this video was done without it. Once this is done, switch to Yin and Yang if your health needs help, or one of your dual casting paradigms if it doesn't. Vanille should have casted D-Protect and D-Shell on Brynhildr by now. If you don't have haste, select to cast some spells, and then as soon as they're out, switch to your other dual casting paradigm to refill your ATB gauge. Waiting for it to fill by itself will take too long. If you need to heal, switch briefly to yin and yang, and then back to your dual casting paradigms. If your health ah. is in bad shape, also use potions after shifting your paradigm. You should only need to use these three throughout the battle to fill the gestalt gauge. Once Brynhildr gets close, forget your life and go for broke. Using this strategy, you should finish just in time. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's ways you have to like cheese the fucking game at times. You have to fucking cheese, which is really annoying. I like the way Vanille shakes her ass while preparing for the attack. Me too, dude. Vanille is ideal other than her obnoxious personality, but you know. She's got the ideal build. Alright, skip. Let's see. Okay, so paradigms. Yeah, you have to like fucking cheat. So you need two dual castings. Ravager, Ravager, okay, and then Yang and Yang. And you need Tide Turner. And then you need to manually cast. Alright. It's not bad. Classes, shit. Yeah, I fucked up the class. Yeah. Fuck, I put Synergist instead of Ravager. Yes. Alright. Yeah, whatever. Nobody cares. Dude, this is fucking AIDS. Like, playing as Saz already fucking sucks. But, dude, these fucking timed fights are obnoxious. Alright, let's see. Oh, wait, yeah, I have to get up there. Let me not fuck it up this time. Oh wait, let's see what I do cast. Okay, and then Ravager and Medic. Okay. That's good. Now I need to go here.
That way I get more upgrades. So now, just make sure I'm on. Yes. Okay. Dude, I was so... Alright, I'm getting it. Guess. This is just gonna be a fucking... I have to get a good run. Holy fuck, dude. This is ass. This is so fucking ass, bruh. I just have to get a good run. Well, this is technically hard mode. There is an easy mode on the PC version. This is like the, I guess, normal slash more difficult mode. Medic. It's so irritating. I have to upgrade every time. No, he doesn't have health. You have to charge a boss gauge in order to capture him like a fucking Pokemon. It's fucking retarded.
All right, let me try this again. So what I need to do is just make sure I spam items in between swapping, I think is what it is. Vanille, heal me. Potions suck in this game. There we go! Yes! I got it! Fuck, dude! Oh my god. 30 seconds left. Motherfucker. That's right! Let's do it! That's right! Alright, I need that. Holy fuck, that was ass, dude. That was absolute fucking ass. Yeah, that video wasn't joking. You will finish just in time. Bro, quit acting like that ain't the finest piece you've run into. Why is he gonna shoot her? I Siler with the five? We'll check it out, man. A lot of things can be excused. Shooting kids, anyone. Bro, she's not a kid. Kindness like his 
You don't forget. Enough. Is enough. Gaming. No, she's covered up. Do be careful with those. For every task, there's a perfect tool. cocoons against us with us dead they were sure everything would go back Clive should have clapped those cheeks who's the way it was he before. fucked uh, Jill just not Benedicto which is a shame because that was the prime piece of Final Fantasy 16 I'm on chapter 9 now, so there's 13 chapters, so... The Lassie will face official sentencing upon the convoy's arrival in the capital. So what's with the freak show? So the Primarch can stand in judgment of the villainous Lassie. With their execution as the climax, the people will cheer their demise, and Falsi Dominion will be undisputed. All part That's of the plan. right. Yes, but it also presents an opportunity. Griffin likes his women as loose as possible. Yeah, you can slide in easier, bro. You ain't got to do all that foreplay shit. And focused his personal attention on resolving the pulse crisis. They're baiting us, trying to draw us out. Bait, huh? Yeah, that's right. Here are your friends. Come and get them. Well. If they're daring us to mount a rescue, I'll take that action. All in. <laughs> Alrighty, bets are on the table. We leave when you're ready. I'll be standing by. Achievement unlocked. I'm still on chapter 8? Holy shit, dude. Okay, no, chapter 9. There we go. I was about to say, bro. There's no fucking way. I just changed setting and everything. Typically, the uh, different areas are a new chapter. Alright. So that's good for that. Switch over here. Yeah, this is a pretty long linear game, so, you know, people who bitch about games being linear, like, bro, they're not long enough. It's like, well, you can have a lengthy linear game. Just because it doesn't have a fucking empty, dull, and boring open world doesn't mean the game's not lengthy.
Yeah, the 360 generation, you were allowed to have attractive women. Not anymore. Checking these tweets real quick, make sure I can pull them up. Um, that's fine, and that's fine. all right. Switch headphones, switch the OBS screen, and we're good to go. All right. So first up, we have this. It goes on for like another minute after this too, and he's just beating the shit out of her. Yeah, that dude's going to fucking prison for a long time. That's like a major fucking felony. <laughs> Not the anime figures. This guy's nine-year-old cousin destroyed it. Dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's an expensive fucking cousin. Holy shit. All right, and then we got Stephen Hawking on Epstein's Island. Oh, oh that feels oh, so good. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 like that. Oh, 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 I thought about this all day. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, not so fast. You are hurting me. Oh, oh that oh, feels oh. so... Yeah, that shit's gross, dude. That is absolutely... Like, I don't know. I've never liked Stephen Hawking. I've always thought he's just a mouthpiece, literally, because how the fuck do we know he was actually controlling... Uh, He was controlling what he was saying, like... You know, I, I think he was a agent of the current thing, let's call it. And people would use him to basically put validity behind whatever fucking narrative they're trying to push. So, I don't actually think Stephen Hawking was legit whatsoever. He's like fucking Bill Nye, dude. He's a literal fucking actor. All right, so this. There are spoilers in the video. Spinal stagnant. All right. C15 is one of the most unintentionally funny games ever made, and I don't award that distinction lightly. It's um. Oh it God, does this have Zoomer editing? It's trying its best. In this game, you play as John Fantasy, an intrepid prince of insomnia, accompanied by the BTS crew, as they travel across Korea in their bid to dodge the draft and reestablish the Joseon dynasty with Jungkook as their one true king. If you can think... Oh, God. Oh. Give it 15 minutes. Do you want to conscript God to kill endangered animals? Entering Super Saiyan mode to kill a sea snake, compress a mountain sized turtle into a black hole, and break the entire game's leveling system because of lasagna? Yeah, that's possible. Is it a good game? Well, uh, that's debatable. The original director wanted to make the game a musical, but you know, thank God they added the hyper realistic pizza. It just wouldn't be the same. This game is one of the most baffling design disasters that I've ever seen, and showing it to you in its full, absurd glory is a service to my country. With hurricane force total shifts, batshit story, and utterly incomprehensible combat there is no part of this 
game that didn't surprise me, although I don't think they intended that. So come along as we dive headfirst into the boy band madness and recall the finest game of 2016. If you know any Latin, this game is fucking insulting. Our story begins with the King of Korea, whose name is King King Light Heaven, the 113. Dude, he could literally be talking about the worst game ever made, and I would automatically like it more than whatever the fuck he's saying. This editing is fucking horrible. I looked it up on the wiki. Their dynasty is only 2,000 years old, meaning for him to be there, every single male king must have fucked at 17. Maximum. He's busy disowning his son. Uh, yeah, that's pretty normal. And our protagonist, Knight Light Heaven, in hopes that he will get some blonde bitch pussy. Knock this, my son. I, 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 uh, I, I have erectile dysfunction. It's here that we're introduced to our buddies, the BTS boys, and all of their unique mechanics. Quicksilver is a light Slovenian fanboy who exclusively fights through small arms fire. Fire Knowledge is a smart, calculating man who shakes you with rusty knives. And Sword Friendship is a burly, reliable bear who hits people with giant chunks of metal. With our friends assembled in our car out of gas, it's time to begin the game in earnest. Now, it's surprising me that they actually struggle to push their car since Noctis can deflect punches from a fucking giant. This sets in motion a Series of quirky adventures to satiate the bloodlust of Park Jimin. It's time to talk about that combat, or better known as a 19th century safari. Take that and cease hold the lion. When it works, you're dashing between enemies, performing mid-air backflips, and teleporting around fast enough to burn my graphics card. For the other half, though, it's imbalanced as fuck. Let's go on a quest to explore a level 20 cave. In order to get there, you'll have to drive down the street, take the path, and fight the mandatory level 54 Giga Snake. Endgame bosses are level 53. I'm not even 10 hours in. Fortunately, you could run right past it and straight into the instant cool crabs. I'm convinced they put this here by accident. There is no reasonable explanation. So how do we stop getting crap? They didn't put it there by accident. The whole fucking point of putting high level enemies in early areas is to give you a reason to go back. Like your dad. Noctis has four slots to use four weapons of various movesets, including swords, bigger swords. Also for new game plus too, but you know. Resident, I drop the press channel, rock on a stick, and magic. Mind freak is pretty cool, but uh, bullets work a little faster. Each enemy reacts differently to each weapon, forcing you to switch up your playstyle, or alternatively, just hold down the sword button. Yeah, and pretty watch much. The dude, pretty much every open world RPG has like high level enemies in early areas that you're just supposed to avoid. Like, bro, Elden Ring. You step out of the fucking tutorial cave or whatever, and you're greeted with that fucking boss that'll push your shit in that you're supposed to come back to later. Like, so many fucking games do that. It's a very common trope. I can just feel the variety, but by far the best weapon in your arsenal is the point warp, which allows you to travel arbitrary distances at will. Oh, buddy, hang on. I see a pixel like five miles away. The primary contributor towards the game actually being fun is point warp, even when I use it to cheese the game. Not to mention, the animation budget is absurd. Every time you hit someone's back, every single time you parry a boss, for every boss, there is a unique animation. You can really feel the animator sweat as he nears the end of his 13-hour Japanese workday at the Square Enix Insane Asylum, leaping 60 feet to stab a dog, a mid-air sword fight, and a triple Yeah, this game is fire, bro. It's all here, and, and it's really Final janky, Fantasy Final Fantasy is great, is especially after they fixed works, it. But it doesn't often work. So before our like the launch version of Final Fantasy 15 was pretty rough, but they fixed a lot of the issues post launch and they added a bunch of content to it for free. And that's not even including the uh, you know, DLC which adds a shit ton to the game now. I mean, for 20 bucks, you get the full game and all the DLC. You will not spend 20 better dollars in my opinion. Shit is great. Ruling performance in a fucking yeah, chapter 13 at launch was fucking AIDS. It's actually fun now. The ring is busted. The rest of our the really the fuck? To answer such questions as, why has our dad sent us to Nevada? Why is the cow big? Why won't a virtual YouTuber sue the Maki Watami collaborate with me? There are six gods or some shit, and they made humans for fun. Big mistake. These include Dwayne the Rock Johnson, the Wizard, the Snake, the Unsafer YouTube, Unlimited Blade Works, and the God of Breakdancing. The Tango Totem in particular was very helpful and told us how to turn on our stove. From this, the beautiful and powerful civilization of Solheim had risen to try and kill the gods immediately, presumably with enough nukes to make Belka look like Clown College. This, of course, forces the dancing deity to strike them down, creating demons and alternative political philosophies. This pisses everyone off and begins the First Korean War, forcing the gods to give the kings of Lucis some cool swag and the K-pop crystal, forever dividing humanity and preventing the manifestation of white people Juche. So after the defeat of the Samba Scourge, the gods took a nap for like several thousand years, leaving the maintenance of Earth to the kings of Lucis, apparently seeing no problem with this. So anyways, the Nivelheim Empire just takes over the entire planet using an army of Juche demon terminators. Their new goal is to what kill the all fuck? the gods again, except this time while- There you go, man. Their planet using an army of Juche demon terminators. Their new goal- Another prime Final Fantasy babe is to what kill the all the fuck? gods again except this time while they're sleeping and by the time our game begins the kingdom of Lucis has retreated to one city we were I guess robbed the from her DLC now, what do you think happens the literal instant that you leave the city for an arranged marriage with the empire do I hear skydiving there'll be no wedding bells for today there'll be no wedding bells for today 
I mean, I guess the plot has to happen sometime. I got spurs. That jingle, jingle, jingle. This emotional and life-changing moment affects our protagonist greatly. Everything he's ever known has been destroyed, and nothing will ever be the same again. Hey, knock this. You want to go ride some voids? Ho-ho! Oh, it's almost enough to make you forget about your dead family. With our lives permanently destroyed, it's time for Noctis to begin the true trials of a king. The first step of which is to find all of the tombs of previous kings spread throughout the world and steal their ship so we can enter Super Saiyan mode. Thanks, Grandpa. Your ashes were delicious. This is when the problems begin and they don't end. Director Tetsuya Nomura was, to put it lightly, a fucking bad shit. Again, he tried to make the game a musical because he watched Les Miserables once. There is no escaping the ghost of cut content. It has so many unique and amazing locations that you see one time. It's as if the game has too much money, but the budget had to be prioritized by fucking Cleverbot. This took 10 years and two engines what to- What area do you see one time? You can go to Altitia as much as you want. When you play the main quest, it introduces some new characters in elaborate cutscenes and then kills them in a minute. You would think the open world would be some relief from this, but no, the car is on rails. They didn't even program driving. What does that remind you of? Speaking of things that the developers forgot to do, side quests, there's a, a few of them. But you can fly them. Hold on, how old is this video? Two years? Bro, they already added the flying car at this point. The fuck is he talking about? Of the uh, 200 and Irvin trying to hold his laugh. Oh, I know. Yeah, the, really hard. Six possible activities. There were only two that were good. How can this be? Well, the best way to describe why oh, is to engage in one, and I think this market looks like a great place to start. Hey, what's up, uh, King of the Planet? So I was driving my car, and I just so happened to kill my wife All by right. crashing into a tree uh -huh. at 90 miles per hour. Sounds good. I need you to go find my mangoes. You're fucking what? I left them in the truck after killing my wife in a car crash. I don't think your problem is mangoes. Can you find my mangoes? All right, we'll just go find the mangoes. Wow, look at these bees. <laughs> Thank you for finding the mangoes that I lost when I killed my wife. Okay. A while back, I lost a few apples on the side of the road while driving at night. Okay, let's go do that. Apparently, because they didn't have enough money to waste, Square Enix put a cup noodles quest into the game. The characters actively rant about the deliciousness of cup noodles. They're easy to make whenever you've got a craving, and they're delicious to boot. If you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavor. So heading through the map's disguised hallways on our disguised train, we travel between locations, interspersed between vast stretches of absolute nothingness. This game already looks great. Our gang rides to the city of Lestalum in search of Noctis's ibuprofen. Fortunately, this well-dressed and not suspicious individual has all of the answers that we need. This is Arden, a man who is incapable of speaking normally. Aunt Nursery Rhymes Curious Things. What? He is willing to lead us to Dwayne The Rock Johnson's medicine cabinet, and we accept it without hesitation. So after entering his white van with free My Chemical Romance CDs, we arrive at Dwayne The Rock Skyrocketing Rock Slide Rocket Sprocket. Uh, yeah, I cup noodles that. taste great, but they're shit for you. So for Noctis to gain the god's power and defeat the Empire for good, he has to beat half of them up. Kind of like the Empire does, but he's the correct family of inbred designer dogs, so it's different. A prolonged and painful fight against Dwayne's masturbation arm ensues, really highlighting this game's focus on spectacle at the expense of my sanity. But eventually, we scratch his arm into respecting us, and he fucking he kills everyone in a 90 mile radius. Uh, hello bitches, I'm with the Empire now, and uh, furthermore, I've stolen your car. Get the uh, fuck inside, or this volcano will turn your penis inside out. You know, it's very nice that Arden gave us a lift up twice. I wonder if we'll see more of him. Next on the list of gods to impress is Gandalf, who just kind of lives in the woods that we've already hey, explored. I think they ran out of time for this one, because the only thing standing between us and him is one cave that we just keep walking through. And maybe romance a snake or two. Oh man, guys, she's real cute, I don't know what to say. Bada bing, bada doovel, we got his approval. That took like 20 minutes. This game is more rushed than a fucking Chinese high rise. From this moment going forward, the game has effectively destroyed all possible tension. By having Noctis be explicitly assisted by fucking Zeus. Final Fantasy 15 becomes a game about the gods being lazy. How's this for a mechanic? The gods. Huh? Alright. So is he complaining about fucking summons in a Final Fan? Like, I don't know, bro. Help is summoned randomly. Oh man, Noctis, you're fighting like 90 demons down there? You can handle that. Good luck. Don't worry, Noctis. I will be the one to save you from these three very threatening giraffes. You can thank me later. You know, we've gotten pretty used to this game. The vast open world, the fruit truck incident, or having a- Yeah, the editing is just fucking obnoxious, dude. Like, bro, my attention span is not as great as it used to be, but holy shit, this is making me want to read a fucking book or some shit. We'll throw that shit in the trash. <laughs> like, this fuck, game turns dude. from an open world adventure into a linear corridor. I'm halfway sick of through, seeing all these stupid the fucking jump cards. I don't think I'm going to miss this guy. From this point onward, we are eternally trapped in the cut content zone. The devs made a nearly perfect recreation of Venice with no side quests in it. Look at the detail of this town, the beautiful architecture, the unique art. I was there for 10 minutes. Once. It's actually impressive that they're willing to waste this much time. Even the NPCs in this town are just fucking off. The bartender for the only restaurant in the city talks like he wants to fucking eat you. Uh, what the fuck do you mean, Eldritch Abomination, Satoshi? Get back to the office right now and animate another 100 backflips. So after only God One and God Nude, it's up to Noctis and the Boctis to head to the Imperial Capital and retrieve our K-pop crystal. That is until Arden shows up and he derails the entire fucking plot. Sup, bitch? 
It turns out that Arden isn't just with the Empire, he is the fucking Empire. Oh, and also he uh, can teleport, is literally immortal, has stabbed my wife, and also is going to kill the fucking son. All that we have to do to stop him is enter the city of Pyongyang and endure his weaponless cock and ball torture dump. Yeah, Arden actually has a really good backstory if you play the DLC. This man has gone from helping us to literally trying to gas me. Of course, doing so, the trap knock is in a pocket dimension for 10 years and fight the sun. That way, he can kill the gods and the true king while he's a consenting adult. If this all sounds confusing or stupid, don't worry, I don't have time to explain. You're totally free to watch the five episode anime series, animated episode art and prologue, all four character DLC, and the full King's Glay Final Fantasy 15 movie if you want the full context for what's happening. That's a very ambitious of you, Square Enix. In fact, they retroactively updated the game to contain scenes from the movie because it just didn't make enough sense. Now it's up to us to fight Arden in the future. This is of course the part where the developers realized they had too many bosses since this game was planned as well as the Great Leap Forward. So they make us fight like five in a row. That is some pacing. Not to mention there. Wait, too many boss fight? Hold on. There's too. That's like saying there's too much combat in the fucking video. All right, nah. So he literally was just bitching about having to watch fucking cutscenes or whatever. And now he's bitching that there's too many boss fights? Like, what the fuck is the point of playing a game if you don't want to actually fucking play it, bro? They're all very difficult. One might say a They are not difficult. I mean, if you fucking suck at the, like, basic-ass combat, then yeah, I guess they could be difficult. Absolutely unplayable. As it turns out, valuing your own time by not playing the shitty fetch quests gives your experience vastly below what is expected. We aren't even strong enough to fight the big snake. I could go back and do. Dude, it's like almost impossible to get hit in Final Fantasy 15 if you're even halfway competent at the gameplay. Like it's so fucking easy. Some quests. If I was fucking stupid, no, we're going to do something much worse. So what you're gonna want to do is travel back in time to Venice and endure the five minutes of gondola riding. You cannot. You can, you can skip it. Skip it. We do this to head to the cannibal restaurant and dine. You absolutely can skip the gondola riding. On some photorealistic lasagna. This step is non-negotiable. Next, what you're gonna want to do is time travel further in the past to Nevada. Watch out for this guy. He might try to steal the platinum ship. Go and initiate the quest where you're supposed to fight the huge fucking blastoids for two hours. You can try to summon God, but he is powerless against the big turtle. Congratulations, you've unleashed unstoppable death into this world, and now it's up to you to destroy it. This is the Ring of the Lucio. You get it after visiting the two-hour ball twisting dungeon, and can be used to compress enemies out of existence. For no discernible reason, it works on the turtle, instantaneously killing him via compression into a stellar object. That is a lot of XP. Now, XP is applied only when you sleep and can be enhanced by sleeping in a hotel, which is multiplied by three if you eat lasagna. It's time to travel back to the future, into an alternate fucking timeline where we've gone Garfield, and by editing the past in Nevada, we have altered the future. Congratulations, you now have the XP equivalent of three giant turtles. The game is over, why even play anymore? All that's left is to strut back to the Arden gauntlet and let the game play itself. Just take caution when time traveling that you do not get absorbed into the eternally fallen hellscape. Now we can break through Arden's big cuckoo using the help there's a two hour boss nah it's like 20 minutes so when the game first came out there was a boss fight called the Adamantoys which was that turtle and basically it would take you about 30 minutes to beat originally well people complained about it so they added the ability to just counter it with the ring and if you did that enough times you would eventually get the one hit kill on it so you can beat the boss in like five minutes. But no, the the turtle never took two fucking hours. It was like 30 minutes at most. It was not that big a deal. But that was like the whole point is it was supposed to be like this insane fucking fight because once you beat the turtle, he gives you a ring that gives you max health, essentially. So you get the Adamantoy's ring, which you put on, and it maxes out whatever character's health is wearing it. It puts it up to 9999. So the whole point of beating the turtle is, you know, it has a shit ton of health because, you know, it gives you a ring that has a shit ton of health. So it's like a fucking secret thing you can do. You don't have to do it. It's more so just kind of like a secret boss. But, yeah. They added the ability to fucking insta-kill it with the ring, so it's not even a big deal anymore. Help of each god individually. <laughs> Although, they apparently can't just kill him because that would free me from this nightmare. Your wife's ghost also shows up, and I'm gonna be honest, I forgot that Lunafreya was in the game because she's a walking plot device. The game has no autonomous women in it, very based of you, Japan. As for the ending of the game, it's everything that the developers had left over. Big dog, and fuck it, he's in the game now. Breakdancing man, yeah, do it, just put him in the geometry. Hey, Noctis, I need your help to retrieve- Breakdancing man, let's put him in the- Like, see, this is the type of shit. It's like, I get he's doing the whole fucking Zoomer humor shit, but it's like, okay- 
It's not just a random fucking boss they drop in the game. If you halfway paid attention, you would understand why he's in the game. I don't know, man. This is not a serious review. This is just, you know, a dude shit posting basically and in an obnoxious manner. This could have been like a five minute video, but it's 16 minutes for no fucking reason. After I killed my wife, I thought I was done with this. And of course, killing Noctis's grandparents with a fucking bazooka. So by the time we've reached what is essentially the Joker, I can say with confidence that I am fucking done. It's very fitting that Arden's only motivation as a villain is to personally screw with me until the final battle, because that's exactly what the game has accomplished. The game even said- That is not his motivation, but- no. Says it out loud. Spite's all that's kept him going. See, this is the thing. Why are you reviewing the game like two years ago when all the DLC was out and you're not going to include like the DLC plot elements? I mean, it doesn't make any you're sense. You're going to go with just spite. Killing Arden is pretty much a formality at this point. Only made more expedient when God gets off his ass and actually helps me by ruining the final boss fight. What a cool mechanic. Much like the rest of the game, I don't know what's happening and yet I'm winning. Now as I watch Noctis painfully throw his body onto the various... Today's subject, like unconventional warfare tactics. The game even feels the need to be so ridiculous and dramatic that Noctis McFarton kills himself so that he can double kill Arden in the afterlife. But really, that's just part of the charm. Final Fantasy XV realizes to some extent just how ridiculous it's being. The fact that it doesn't care for even a second how much money it throws away, how over the top the set pieces are, or just how fucked up the pacing is, is kind of endearing. The game has altered genres hour by hour. It has both too much money and not enough money. It's both an open world game and a string of set pieces. And the combat is great. Or it's terrible. One could say it depends on your outlook. There's this moment near the end of the game where it asks you to reflect. It's taken pictures of you throughout the game, and I was going to choose the one that exemplified my playthrough. I didn't think that it meant much until the final cutscene where Noctis shows a picture of the massive turtle to his wife, looking fondly back at all the broken experiences he went through, and I burst out laughing for several minutes. Nothing will ever describe to you what the game is about more than that. This product is not worth any of your money. It will never be, but holy shit, maybe it was worth my time. I would like to it's not worth your money but it was worth my time Nika you ain't funny What the fuck does that even mean <laughs> What <laughs> Yeah this was worth my time but it ain't worth your like what that makes no fucking sense I don't know, dude. Th this whole video was all over the place. Like, if there was, like, genuine, genuine fucking critiques, then I could see. But it's just either he was purposely not liking it or I, I don't fucking know, man. He liked it? Well, if you look at the uh, thumbnail, he says it's bad. Hold on here. I didn't show you all the thumbnail because I had the link. But yeah, it's bad. So no, he didn't like it. But yeah, I don't know, man. What is the point of reviewing a game after all the DLC has been out for years at that point and you don't review the DLC with the game? Like, I don't know, man. That's some TikTok tier content. I watched his DMC5 videos. I knew I couldn't watch any more of his videos. Oh, did he shit on that too? Yeah, that was like the dumbest fucking statement I've ever heard. This game isn't worth your money, but it was worth my time. Well, if it's worth your time, wouldn't that by definition mean it's worth your money? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. So, I saw there with the five... What is this? Uh... Game Pass, that should be fine. First of many. So, oh, these are the new Game Pass games. Trash. You can get this game for literally five bucks pretty much anywhere. Close to the Sun. <laughs> Figment. Oh, wow. Resident Evil 2. This has been on sale for like six bucks. Like, We Happy Few is already an Xbox game. What the fuck? So they're adding an Xbox game to Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> what? Bro, they literally already owned that game. Oh my god, bro. Yeah, these are some dog shit fucking games, bro. I don't know, dude. Goy Slop Pass has just been absolutely disappointing as shit. 
Like, for your $17, you could just buy these two games and own them forever. I think this, like, the complete edition of Assassin's Creed Valhalla was, like, $20 a few weeks ago. And then Resident Evil 2 Remake goes on sale for, like, 6 bucks. So, literally, for the price of a month of Game Pass, you could just buy the two games you want to play and own them forever. That's the thing, is, like, Game Pass really is false economy in a lot of situations. Like, most people are not actually getting $17 worth of value out of it. Like, if you actually do the math, the amount of money that you spend just buying the games you're interested in on Game Pass versus, you know, spending a monthly subscription fee, you're probably spending more on the subscription fee. Like, all these people saying, oh, you get all the Yakuza games. Well, if how long does it take you to beat all the Yakuza games? Like, what, 30, 40 hours each? So let's say you beat two a month, and they're like $5 each on PlayStation in the sale. You could get three Yakuza games for the price of one month of Game Pass, and you own them forever. So by the time you've gone through and beaten all the Yakuza games in Game Pass, if that's all you're playing, you've already spent more money on Game Pass subscriptions than if you would have just bought the games, and then at the end of it, you don't even own them. So it's, like, pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. Game Pass is not as good of a value as you think. They are not 30 to 40 hours? How long are they, then? I thought Yakuza games were pretty lengthy. Like, 20? Well, maybe the main campaign, but if you do all the side activities and shit, I'm pretty sure they're, like, 30 hours. Let's see. Let's just do Yakuza 6, for example. Yakuza 6, how long to beat? So, the main campaign is 18 hours. You'll spend around 53 hours to do everything. Yeah, like 40 hours. I'll, that's not that crazy of a number, dude. 30 hours to do everything in an open world game? That's not that bad. Like, to do all the major like story missions and side activities, like 30, 40 hours. That's not a unrealistic number, I feel like. If you're DSP, it takes 100. That's right. Yakuza 0 was a nightmare to 100%. Yeah, I wouldn't. Dude, I don't know. I tried to play that Judgment game, and I could not get into it. That shit was miserable to fucking sit through. Shadow the Edgehog. Yeah, maybe I'll play that at some point. <laughs> More people re-uploading Steamboat Willie. Yeah, Shadow the Edgehog is like fucking what? Five hours maybe? It's really short. How much to play Tell Me Why? How long is Tell Me Why? Nine and a half hours. Oy vey. That sounds pretty long for a uh, Life is Strange clone. Let's see. You generation with the two. This guy is spitting facts. What fact in particular did you like that he spit, you generation? Daryl Zone with the two. Griffin loves Twink, Final Fantasy XV boys. That's right. Especially uh, Gladiolus, dude. He's actually a power bottom. 
And Bill Herb with the 10. Star Wars is saved. A woman is going to reshape the movies. Thank God, dude. Glad to see all the criticism of Star Wars being too political. They've decided to hire a pseudo journalist who's known for making gender inequality film. Oh, that's great. It's just what Star Wars needs is more uh, powerful females. Thank God. Uh, I can't think of any negative aspects of Final Fantasy 15 other than the fact that they cut DLC that was supposed to come out. So, yeah, I agree, Generation. There are no negative aspects, so. Star Wars is saved. That's right, dude. It's saved. Thank God. All right, we'll see what this is. Um, Copy... And so tell me the misrepresentation of what they of, of your positions that got you banned. When I was able to co-host a show for two and a half hours a couple weeks ago with Elon Musk on Spaces, that just the main show had 20 million views, over 100 million views of the clips, biggest Spaces uh, that, that, that Elon's ever done. I, I, I hear we're going to do another one soon. He, he was told by Tucker privately and others, hey, Alex was not deplatformed for Sandy Hook. He thought that. And he said on the air, he goes, no, I went to the log, and I noticed it was for confronting Oliver Darcy, who had been taking my sponsors and getting me kicked off there. Nah, Alex was deplatformed for uh, putting his hand on Marco Rubio. That's what it was. I remember that. They made some huge fucking stink because Alex patted Marco Rubio on the back. And little Marco got all like, Don't touch me! I'm a senator! Don't touch me! It was like some fucking bitch-ass shit. That's the reason he got deplatformed, FYI. That was the excuse they used. He assaulted a senator. And no, I'm not joking. You can look it up. Hold on, let's see. Let's see. I can I can find the video. It was something fucking dumb, bro. Marco Rubio is a fucking pot-bellied chicken neck bastard. But Alex Jones, Marco The, the, um... She's not answering. Just, Republicans are acting like it isn't happening. Thank God Trump is. Well, it's I, weird, man. Oh, yeah, it's really uh, weird. There's no purge of conservatives. I don't know. There's no shadow banning. Who is this guy? Are you, are you concerned about bias in social media? Yeah, who's this huh? guy? We deplatformed Are you concer him. concerned about bias in social media? Well, so I think the bigger bias is against freedom of expression. Everybody should be... There's a... There's a look, I, I support here. going it's after... It's here, but you say I don't exist. Is that a heckler or a press a gaggle? Look at this guy. The He's <laughs> saying that I don't exist and they're deplatforming me. I just don't know who you are, man. They, I don't read sure, your websites. Sure. And they demonize so let me, me in these well, very hearings. Here's the and then he plays dumb. Here's the question. Infowars.com, you, you know what it is. Do you think Google, does Facebook, does That's why you didn't get elected. Do they need to be regulated like, like, like do, do they need to be regulated? <laughs> Marco <laughs> Rubio, the snake. All right, man. Who are you, man? Who is this guy? I swear to God, I don't know you are, man. You better hope you can deplatform me. Tens of millions of views. Infowars. Bigger than Rush Limbaugh. He knows who InfoWars well, is. But he's playing this joke over here. That's why hey, the deplatforming didn't work. But but, he, but here, here's here's the sure. question. Here's a question. Hey, don't touch me again, man. I'm asking you not to touch well, me. Sure. <laughs> what a fucking pussy! I'm telling you, dude. This is what he got. Deep. I'm not even joking. This is the shit that got him banned from pretty much everything. Bigger than Rush Limbaugh. He knows who InfoWars well, is. But he, playing this joke over here. That's why hey, the deplatforming didn't work. But, but, but you're, you're, <laughs> Literally the lightest little pat. He could have been brushing dust off his shoulder. Holy shit, man. Here's a question. Here's a question. I'm don't not worry. even fucking kidding. That is what got him banned. I don't, I don't, be, I don't, know, you you, I don't know who you are. It's not just because be Marco Rubio is a fucking glowy piece of shit. You're not going to get arrested, man. You're not going to get arrested. Enough, I'll take care of amendment. it myself. Oh, he's going to take care of it himself, dude. He's so fucking tough. I didn't say that. You know who I am, but he's I'm so mad. Saying. You're not going to silence me. You're not going to silence America. Well, but, there are, but there are people. You are, like, you are literally like a little gangster thug. There are, there are people in this country. <laughs> Rubio who feel just threatened to physically uh, take care of me. There are people who that. feel that they're being, um, well, you're they are being First silenced. Amendment. They feel like he tells you China's by, the problem, by, which it is, but they're taking our free like speech Google, right now. Social media platforms, Facebook, There goes Rubio. Do you believe that these... He's such a little bitch, man. Marco Rubio is a clown. But yeah, that is what got Alex banned from pretty much everything. He assaulted a senator. Things. 
and bragging about it. So I saw him in D.C. going in a committee hearing that they were talking about me at later. And I confronted him and said, man, you're an anti-American person. Well, they called that bullying, and that was the final strike uh, that took me off of uh, Twitter at the time. And so then it only made me bigger for a while. And so we, they now bragged about it once they won these court cases by rigging them. <laughs> a PR firm put out press releases um, when they won the Connecticut case, the second one in uh, November of last year, 2022. That'll be two years ago or you know, two years back. And I didn't know what happened until later. So, yeah, Sandy Hook happens. It's real. I think it happened. It's a terrible tragedy. School shootings you know, are, are, are real. A bunch of academics and people start looking at anomalies. It becomes this huge Internet thing, hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. Other people covering it, the professors in Florida and Wisconsin and a school safety guy and a bunch of people. And it turned out some of the things they said were true. Some weren't. Turns out a couple of them are probably schizophrenic. And I simply covered it on a few shows, um, had callers call in. What they put in evidence was 22 minutes uh, over six years. It was six years after, seven years after they sued me. I hadn't talked about it when they sued me for over two years. Barely ever talked about it, but they cherry-picked it. The PR firm put the clips out, ran it right, right as I was being deplatformed, right after I was deplatformed in 2018. Suddenly, it's like they were invading a country. The propaganda was in sometimes every newspaper, almost every day, mm -hmm. Nightline, or, or that's already gone, PBS, CNN, every show. Uh, Ted Koppel did chime in on other shows, but it was Nightline. Dan Rather, uh, all of them come out yeah, against... Yeah, Marco Rubio and Lindsey Graham probably play dress up together while their wives are getting fucked. Me. I mean, Old Guard, they had 60-minute shows about it. They had NBC Dateline shows about it. And they said he's currently going to their houses. He's currently sending people to their houses. He's currently urinating on graves. None of that ever was put in court. No one ever did any of that anyways. And so then they sue me for years to get all these depositions. We give them all the discovery. There's nothing there. And they go, you didn't give us everything. You're if Democrats are rats, then Republicans are sna They're both rats. And there's no such thing as a Republican and a Democrat anymore. You literally have the Democrats and the Republicans are basically less uh, extreme Democrats. There's no fucking difference between the parties at this point. There is absolutely no fucking difference between Republican, Demo like, Republican and Democrat at this point. They are the exact same party. The Republicans solely exist as the illusion of choice and provide essentially a speed bump for the Democratic agenda. That's it defaulted so now we're gonna have a trial on damages but you're already guilty and then the judges in both places wouldn't let us they had my phone because we gave them the phones when they go oh we have he, he actually gave us his phone no no no. we've given them all my phones the, the real reason the lawyers got sanctioned is with the phones they accidentally just gave them all raw and they gave them some of the sandy hook medical records from those depositions so the lawyers did mess up, but they already had the phone. So I've given them all the phones. How am I not giving them all my text messages, all my emails getting defaulted, and then they have from my lawyers a whole phone, okay? And and so th this is the type of crap in the Perry Mason moment. They go, <laughs> we got you, we got your phone, and you didn't give us the stuff. And I went, you got my phone because I gave my lawyers. And they're like, well, you gave us the raw phone, you son of a bitch. So I'm like, yeah, my lawyers messed up and did that. I, I had nothing to hide. I'm like, here's my three phones over the last seven years. I kept them, take all the things off, and the best they got was my wife taking a dick pic of me that I never, I'm like, I never took a dick pic. And I'm like, look at the, I go, oh my God, my wife goes, remember that time you were asleep? I took a picture. And so they have a picture <laughs> of my ding dong. So that's, that's the type of weirdness uh, that, that goes on. <laughs> then the PR firms after they won came out and said, and they got bought by the biggest PR, P, P, PR firm in the country right after that, that they were already big out of New York. Who were they? And they, I forget the exact name. You want I'll Google it. It's not the ones that try to do Rogan, is it? The scumbag Midas touched Meisel's brothers. That's the ones who got that thing going at Rogan, uh, the big end. Yeah, you guys have heard the whatever families have already said that they'll go down to like 5% of the overall settlement for the lawsuit. So he doesn't even have to pay a billion, whatever. It's like down to 80 million now, and it'll probably keep dropping lower. Like this whole fucking lawsuit is a joke. It'll probably get thrown out in appeals. Like, uh, what's that shit called? It's a constitutional amendment. It's a. Uh, it has to do with like unusual punishments or unfair punish. I can't fucking think what that's called. That's what it'll probably get thrown out on. Um, shit. What is that fucking thing? There's like a term. Yeah, I think it's the Eighth Amendment, but. It's like a. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, Fourth Amendment. Maybe. I think that's it. No, that's search and seizure. Is it fifth? That's, no, that's, fuck. 
I always get the amendments confused because it's like they're all kind of similar. That's the speedy jury, sixth, seventh. I used to know all these because I had to fucking take tests. Seventh Amendment is jury. Excessive bail. Oh, yeah, cruel and unusual punishment. That is what will probably be the thing. Is a cruel and unusual punishment. That's the term I was looking for. Because a billion dollars for saying something on the internet is a cruel and unusual punishment. There was no actual physical harm or damage caused by that. No amount of emotional stress constitutes a billion dollars like that will never hold up in an appeals court that's why they're trying to settle for like a microscopic amount compared to the overall settlement because they know that shit will never hold up you generation with the two the force is female you bigot no bro Anakin was the chosen one and there was no bitch in his blood. 2023 Perfect Dark with the five. Speaking of the glowies, making people they don't like disappear. Any news on that guy that blew up his house? Nope. Radio silence now. So they made him disappear. But yeah, no, they still claim he died in the fire, even though that's objectively false. But, you know, gotta love uh, the police. They love to cover shit up like that. Spotify controversy because he mentioned ivermectin. That's those well, guys. Yeah, I don't want to get into inside baseball because uh, Joe's asked me not to, but let's just say you're you're hot. You're, 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 you're <laughs> I'm just curious because I bet there's a couple well, of... There was a whole bunch yeah. of them. It was a whole bunch. I mean, I could search engine it. It has a particular name. It, 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 they put out press releases when they, quote, won the case saying, hey, we brought his evil to the attention of the public in 2018. Then we got him sued, and now we're going to shut him down. So what they did is they went and cobbled together some stuff, blew it all up, exaggerated it times 100, and, and, and then, I mean, I have people in the grocery store going, listen, you son of a bitch, you stop going to their houses. This is even like a year ago. And I'm like, I never went to their houses. I've never been to Connecticut. I've now since been there at the court case. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, no one ever went to their houses. No one peed on, there's no proof. They just get up on the stand. Listen to this. <clears throat> there was an FBI agent. I never said his name. Look this up. It was, it, was, it, it, was, it was in court. They admitted it. Never said his name. No one ever covered it on my network at InfoWars. Didn't know who he was. The internet saw him with his gun pointing up the wrong direction. Uh, with a no FBI uh, stuff on when he went in, and he is an FBI agent, and he sued me saying because a few people called his office to see if he was real. That was his testimony. He got $95 million. I never said his name, didn't know who he was till he sued me, and then my lawyer goes, has Mr. Jones ever said your name? No. Well, what happened to you? And he goes, well, I had to take six hours of psychological stuff because one time a man called me at the office to see if I was really an FBI agent. $95 million. I mean, that is in the trial where I couldn't respond. Yeah, and the judge gave never us over 30 things I appeals. couldn't say. Couldn't say I was in bankruptcy. Couldn't <laughs> say that I uh, only talked about it in 22 minutes in all those years. Never could tell people I'd apologized before they ever sued me because I'm like, I'm not the Sandy Hook guy. I apologize. I apologize. I think it happened. I was just playing devil's advocate. It's... And both judges in Connecticut and Texas literally had the same list I couldn't say. And that's why when I did say, I'm in bankruptcy, she goes, shut it down, get the jury out, get off the stand, go sit down. And she goes, Mr. Jones, you're a liar. You're not bankrupt. You're not broke. And she goes, now, financial expert, we could not respond, got up for a full day and said, this man, I've examined his books, never examined her books, is worth $400 million. I was millions <laughs> in the hole then. Okay? Millions. Alex is probably worth $400 million, and maybe not on paper, because, you know, he's probably smart and makes his money disappear. But, bro, he's made a fucking killing over the years selling those pharmaceuticals and shit. In the hole then, and I'm like, here's my filed bankruptcy. The judge said, you're not entering that. And, and, and so, again, whether you think I'm good or bad, folks, they murdered justice in a, in, in a PR-run operation. And then, I'm not supposed to get into this, but you were really, you weren't warm. You were white hot with what you said. <laughs> they then got the text messages, and imagine whose text messages are on there. Innocuous stuff like, hey, let's get a steak. 
hey, what's going on? Hey, man, come to the club tonight. And then there was a behind-the-scenes harassment operation that went on against somebody. So so this is dragnet. Just attack. Go after whoever you can. It's yeah, I don't really care if you like Alex Jones or not. This entire court proceeding is a fucking horrible precedent for the First Amendment, which is the reason why they picked him to like try and institute this because they know he's not popular among like the normies. So nobody cares if like, Oh, crazy Alex Jones gets fucking massacred in court over a first amendment issue. But if you look at the bigger picture, it's about setting a legal precedent so that they can do it to other people. That's the thing is you pick a controversial person to like publicly lynch set the legal precedent and then you can go after everyone else with that precedent once it's established. So that's the thing. So this whole fucking court case glows in the fucking dark hardcore. Rashdom V2 of the 10, just a thought, but I think the parents emotionally overact or overreacted to what he said since they're feeling the trauma of losing their kids. I mean, I would if I lost my kid like that. Yeah, that's the thing. But, you know, that's where you have ambulance chasers, a.k.a. the lawyers, who come in and convince them that they need to sue and that type of shit. I mean, let's be honest. How many people do you think were watching Alex Jones who were parents of these kids? Like, Let's be honest here. How many people do you think really were Alex Jones viewers that felt personally attacked over what he said about the school shooting? I highly doubt in fucking Connecticut many of them were. No, this is a lawyer who saw an opportunity for a, you know, very publicly popular lawsuit and jumped on it. This is why a lot of lawyers are called ambulance chasers is because they're just opportunistic, like, you know, little snakes that look for any reason to fucking sue people and try to extract money. It's what they do to espionage, like people for espionage. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, the well, I'm ranting on that, but let me just throw this bookmark in and I'll shut up, Jimmy. I, I knew this when Obama <laughs> left office in the, He's in not the John Warner Defense up. Authorization Act of 2017. His last act, major act, was to sign the Defense Authorization. He got $2 billion in there to set up the Office of Countering Foreign Disinformation Propaganda Act, which then started that Trump's a Russian agent, and yeah. now we can spy on his whole operation, and we can get General Flynn because he's a communist, and then now they admit with the weaponization hearings off of that wheel, the middle of that wheel, they built the spokes of the censorship, the surveillance, the FBI, the CIA, coordinating all the censorship. That's all admitted. I knew that. I, this was <laughs> yeah, he never I shuts up, bro. <laughs> Robin Ozzy platform four years ago. Watching the House Armed Services Once Committee Alex meeting, gets going, they he had doesn't stop. The Pentagon experts saying, Mr. Jones is a Russian disinformation agent. We're tracking him, and we're now working with big tech and AI to block his Russian influence. I have the clip. So what I'm saying is exactly what your co-host just said is that is what I was, and, that, and we know a three-letter agency use law firms, the top Democrat law firms in the country ran this, law firms, PR firms, but it was the Justice Department. Listen to this, in my bankruptcy, and they were done up to send an email. This is a year ago. The Justice Department sent an email to my famous bankruptcy lawyer here, well-known, super respected, done some of the biggest bankruptcies in the country for like chemical giants, and says, Mr. Jones will not be afforded the bankruptcy system. This is a hurdle he will not get across. And then the Justice Department came into the case, and when I'm in these depositions, they have one to two federal agents in the room hoping to find something. And I've been so transparent, so real, all the bookkeeping checked out, everything was true. Remember all the headlines? Alex Jones, he's got secret accounts. Alex Jones has offshore accounts. Alex Jones has hundreds of millions of dollars. You can go to Bloomberg, I was actually covering it today. You go to the Connecticut News. Alex Jones is broke, sold his car and his guns and his you know, basically wife's jewelry. I am three million in the hole right now. You can read them. Here's the headline. Alex Jones is broken, selling his stuff. Here's how he got there. Uh, Bloomberg. Alex Jones gets green light to sell his guns and cars. Bloomberg. They now admit that I'm three million in the hole. I was, I was, so, so again, I have under penalty of perjury all this. So now they flipped from, oh, we were wrong. He didn't hide $400 million to, oh, sorry. Oh, they also sued my dad, my mom, my family. My yep. dad spent his whole savings. His he was a dentist for 50, 49 years. My dad has no money. Can't even pay his property taxes. My dad spent. They went after his fucking cat. I shit you not. They tried to take his fucking cat away. <laughs> Like, bro, this shit was fucking psychotic. It's all to set a precedent, though. They're trying to find an easy target that there's going to be no backlash over 
so that they can fucking establish this precedent of just taking literally everything from you. A million and a half dollars in the last couple, and they think it's funny. They think it's funny claiming my dad had hidden money. I, I know I'm ranting. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> so he's not going to shut and up. And the reason why, so I had said that, well, first they come for Alex Jones, and then they're going to come for us. If you're yep. doing independent news and you're speaking against the wars, they're going to come for us. And so that's why you have to stand up right now. And, of course, nobody at the Young Turks will ever go against the wars. They're always for the wars. They're always for whatever the establishment wants, whether it's smearing Julian Assange or pushing Russiagate hoax or COVID lockdowns and, to, and demeaning ivermectin and lying about that. They're all for all of it. So that's Amen. why they didn't care that you got banned because they're never, ever going to go against the establishment. Well, they're given talking points. Nobody, I can tell, nobody gives you talking points. Nobody gives you talking points. And that's why they don't like us is because that's why they don't like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan says exactly what he really thinks. And they don't like authenticity, but the people like it. So, yeah, you were big back at the time you defended me. You were big. You're gigantic now. So it's kind of fair what Tucker said is no huge show defended Jones. No okay. show he heard of. So And so what it went from you, and then it immediately went to journalists, and then it went to leading journalists, then it went to the leading doctors and scientists in their field, and then it went to the former president of the United States. They banned everybody. So it wasn't just Alex Jones. They, they banned anybody and everybody, including anybody who had any counter-narrative to the establishment narrative around war, around COVID, around lockdowns, around mm -hmm. January 6th, around anything. Anybody who had anything to say that the CIA, the FBI, and the establishment didn't want them to say, they banned, they censored. And you couldn't even say the fucking word COVID on YouTube without getting a fucking dis disinformation marker you guys remember that shit like every single video where someone would even mention the word covid you would get that little fucking wikipedia thing underneath the title that says context for covid19 or you would immediately get fucking demonetized like it this type of shit happens right it's wild and they discredited it. And I've, I've been, I've, I've firsthand have knowledge of that. You know what? The one of the first bullshit testing on who we can like do this do was uh, Gamergate. There's people that work in real journalism that to this day still bring that up like that was a real thing. And it was the exact same kind of bullshit. I had the whole media do it to me for a week. Mm -hmm. Charlie Rose, I'll never forget that tweet, Emmy. Then he got me too delayed that piece of shit. Yeah. Hilarious. Come see us do a live stand up show. We'll be in Venice, California, Palmdale, California, Omaha, Des uh, Bill Herb with a five. It's honestly scary how hard they went after him. They're clearly trying to scare people into submit. Yep, and they're trying to establish the legal precedent to do so. Because, yeah, today it's Alex Jones, but tomorrow it can be some random person on Twitter who posted something that goes against the narrative that gets enough traction, and then they come in and ruin your fucking life. No, it, it's a horrible precedent to set. I mean, the fact that, you know, they can even take you to court for shit like this is already a problem because... The cost of defending yourself in court is hundreds of thousands of dollars for something like this, which the average person does not have access to. So even just to defend yourself, if you've done nothing wrong, you have to front hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then maybe you'll recover, but that's if you can make it to the end. It's all designed to force you to like sign some plea agreement or you know admit basically fault and wrongdoing just so you can minimize the fucking, you know, life ruination they try to, you know, hit you with. It's fucking horrible, man. These are some evil people. It's like fucking Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. You know? Edison didn't invent shit. All he would do is sue people with a better idea than him into, like, bankruptcy. He would just keep taking them to court over and over again until they either went personally bankrupt or the company they, like, worked for went, like, bankrupt. And then he would purchase the IP or patent or design or whatever for pennies on the dollar. That's what happened with AC and DC power. You know, Edison's power distribution was inferior to Tesla's, well, instead of actually, you know, acknowledging that, they just fucking sued them to the point where they had to sell it. So, it's pretty bad. The legal system has always been abused like this. It's nothing new. So, it's pretty, like, that just shows you, like, you could have a great idea and an apple comes out and fucking sues the shit out of you until you just eventually are bankrupt and can't afford to defend it anymore. Like, you could come out with a better fucking phone or a better, like, a better fucking, you know, computer chip 
or, you know, anything. And they'll just fucking sue you into oblivion to the point where you can never capitalize on it. It's pretty bad. So. The system is designed to fuck people over. Tesla invented the better... No, 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 no. Tesla didn't invent the light bulb. He uh, was about power distribution. I think he was AC power, right? I always get those confused. Yeah, AC current. And Edison's was DC. And DC was super fucking unsafe and caused, you know, power, like, overloads, fires, all sorts of shit. Like, it was really bad. It was dangerous. And, you know, Tesla had the much safer, more reliable energy distribution. And, you know, Edison didn't like that, so he just sued, basically, Tesla's benefactor until they had to sell it. What does DC stand for? I think direct current or something like that. Let me see. Yeah, DC is direct current and AC is alternating current. But yeah, that's a pretty interesting thing. And of course, guess who uh, Edison was backed by? Uh, J.P. Morgan. So he had more money than fucking God. Because, you know, J.P. Morgan controlled the Federal Reserve. So, good luck. Good fucking luck. Like, J.P. Morgan was one of those guys that could say, I don't like this company, and the company would drop 30% in value at that exact moment. Like, that's how influential that guy was. You generation with the five, react to... Hello. What the fuck is addressing the allegation? Oh, God. Uh, more... Hello, I'm Yan Derrida, the developer of Yandere Simulator. Last year, an extremely serious... Wait, is that how you say it? I thought it was Yan Deer. Yan What the... F <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it that way. Yan Deer is all I'm going to say. ...allegation was made about me that I would like to address. The accusation is that I attempted to groom an underage fan of my game. I will take accountability and admit that I did discuss inappropriate topics with a fan. However, the accusation that I deliberately attempted to groom this fan is false. In this video, I would like to apologize. All right, so he's a weirdo, but not a, you know, child rapist. I don't what I know. feel I should apologize for. But I would also like to give you the full story so that you know what is true and what isn't true. He's still a Let's fucking sexual beginning. degenerate, which Last is year, a fan of my so surprising for someone working on a weeb game. But yeah, my game contacted me and wanted to chat. Usually, when a fan tries to talk with me, I just tell them that I'm too busy. But this person seemed really nice and friendly and funny. Griffin so just I believes him? Well, yeah, nine times out of ten, when someone is accused of grooming, it's not actual grooming. I decided, you know what? People don't know what actual grooming is. Sure, let's talk. Grooming is when you're literally trying to set up, like, sex with a child. You let me know right off the bat. That's, that like, the 16. legal definition of grooming. Like, saying, all right... This is what you're going to do. This is when you're going to meet me. And, you know, this is how you'll get like, that's what grooming is. But I didn't see any problem with that. So when I was 16. I don't know. Typically, grooming allegations are not true. It's just very fucking creepy, creepy fuckers that should not be messaging kids. I had online friends that were in their 20s and 30s. So it just didn't feel weird to me. Yeah. You R. Kelly was a groomer. Normal, but. She had a kind of adult sense of humor, and every now and then she would bring up He was prepping underage people for really sex, yes. That is grooming. When this would happen, I wasn't entirely comfortable with it, but I rationalized to myself that it was no big deal and just kept talking with her. Eventually, I must have said something that sounded like a red flag to her, because at some point she started to record our conversations just in case I turned out to be some kind of predator. No, dude, it's because you're famous and, you know... 
She showed our conversations to a YouTuber, and the YouTuber decided, yep, this guy seems like a groomer. We need to expose him. From what I've been hearing, it kind of sounds like the YouTuber started coaching the girl on how Yeah, if you're somewhat popular online, you should just assume that every single conversation you have with someone is being recorded. ...to manipulate me into saying things that would make me look bad, which wasn't what the girl wanted. But you don't have to just take my word for it. The girl has written a statement about the entire situation, giving her side of the story. I've put a link to it in the description below. I won't tell you what to think about it. You're welcome to read it for yourself and... What did it say? Ali coached me into being exactly what he wanted. Wait, his name is Ali? <laughs> Bro. Based on years of her online stalking along with... Oh, wait, no. So Ali is another girl. Never mind. Allie coached me into being exactly what he wanted based on years of her online stalking along with a community dedicated to bringing him down. She used the same takedown out wait techniques that the FBI uses during sting operations, curate a specific environment, build trust, lure in, take down Allie disrespect my wishes when I didn't even want the video posted because it was just an elaborate scheme to bring views back to her dead channel Every person has faults, but dedicating multiple videos to someone's faults shows her true color. She is a manipulative, hateful... Oh, uh, wait, fuck! I'm gonna push the button. Dare I say it, hateful cunt! An absolutely not a trustworthy source of news. Many of the audio clips were cut up and put together to make him sound terrible. Conversations that were not real. Taking the worst elements of someone's conversation, removing all the context and putting them together that sounds extremely sexual towards a 16-year-old. Allie tricked people into believing... He was a bad person to save her dying YouTube channel. Alex did not groom me. Okay, so... Hold on. So, the so-called victim doesn't feel like they were groomed? So why is this... Oh my god. This I'm so sick of these fucking internet dramas, dude. Dear lord. Link to it in the description below. I won't tell you what to think about it. You're welcome to read it for yourself and draw your own conclusions. So, with the YouTuber apparently instructing the girl on how to steer our conversations in an inappropriate direction, our discussions got pretty weird. I wasn't comfortable with it, and I tried to express that, but like an idiot, I just went along with it anyway. Because I had gotten into the What does weird doing... mean, though? Do you go, know, damn, you got a fat ass, I want to slap that shit, or... Was it like, ooh, woo, you cute? Because he's a fucking weeb. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Candid around this girl and just casually responding to whatever she said, it was very easy for her to get recordings of me answering questions I shouldn't have answered and discussing topics I should not have discussed. Like what? And the YouTuber then used... Name the topics. ...those recordings to make a 40-minute long video accusing me of being a groomer. Out of respect for all of the people in the world who have actually been groomed, we should use the word grooming correctly. Grooming is when an adult tries to establish a relationship with a child with the intention of exploiting or abusing the child. That doesn't describe what I did. Yeah, that's I the thing, is most people family. don't actually use... Gro it's like, you know, either, I mean, either, technically either most people don't use pedophile the in the right context either. You know, it's becoming one of those fucking buzzwords that, you know, are starting to lose any and all meaning. Senator Armstrong with the one gifted membership. Big ups, man. Appreciate it. Friendship with a girl for that reason. That wasn't my intention. I did not attempt to establish a romantic or sexual relationship with the girl. But after having... Yeah, you just act like a fucking creep. Behavior There's a difference. I mean, it's not a good look either way. But, you know, it's still creepy as shit commonly associated with romance like i'm guessing they were talking about like sex and shit like that right is that what it was or something different i, I don't fucking know i don't keep up to date with fucking weebs and this type of shit does anybody have like an idea only fans so wait they were talking about only fans i don't fucking know bro so she's 16 how the fuck did she even have an only fans I can't understand how it was interpreted that way. I feel like it's worth mentioning that a lot of the remarks I made only sound bad when they're out of context. For example, 
There was one time when the girl jokingly said, you should make an OnlyFans. And I said, no, that's dumb. No one would ever want to see that. And she said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not fucking grooming. Said something like, come on, it's so easy to make money on OnlyFans. And when I heard that, I thought, whoa, that's a little concerning. Uh, don't tell me that social media is brainwashing this generation to think that they should just go directly into porn the second they turn 18 because it's the best way to get rich quick. That's a little concerning. I wanted to know if she was joking or if she was being serious. So I asked her, are you planning to start an OnlyFans? And of course, the YouTuber used the recording of me saying, are you planning to start an OnlyFans? To frame me as someone who initiates horrific... He was like, yo, let me get that link day one so I can be the first supporter. Hell yeah. Uh <laughs> Bro. Yeah, that that's not grooming. I mean, it's weird. Like, why are you talking to an underage girl about that shit? Either, either, either but subscribe, it, donate, it's not or get the fuck grooming. out. It's just, it's a perfect example of you should just stop talking to someone when they start doing this type of shit. Just stop engaging with people when they talk about weird stuff. You know? Yeah, it's creepy. It's a creepy conversation, and it's just one you should walk the fuck away from and just stop engaging with, but, you know. I don't know, man. Uh, 2023 Perfect Dark with the two. Should watch Ordinary Gamers. T um, No. I do not want to watch him. He is... I, I don't know. I, I cannot stand Muda Horror's takes on 99% of topics because it's just so reddity. Senator Armstrong with the gifted membership. Big ups, man. Appreciate it. I'd vote for you. We need you as president of the United States because Senator Armstrong is based. I, uh, I saw there with the five. We'll check it out, man. Appropriate discussions with children, which is just completely dishonest. There's a part of me that wants to go point by point down the list of every single questionable or suspicious thing I said and provide context for absolutely everything, but that's not really the main issue here. For one thing, a lot of the stuff I said is just weird no matter what the context is. I'll just admit it. But more importantly, I never should have let conversations like that happen in the first place. A normal, mentally healthy adult would have just blocked the girl immediately after the very first time she said something inappropriate. Yep. But I didn't. And having to face that fact was a wake-up call that made me realize I had deteriorated mentally. So after this whole controversy happened, I decided to take some time to just reflect and try to figure out how I had turned into the type of person who would let something like this happen. After talking it over with a lot of different people, I think I've developed an understanding of exactly how things got to this point, and I think I have the vocabulary to explain it now, too. Over the past 10 years, I neglected absolutely every aspect of my well-being in favor of working on my video game project. I almost never left... How long has he been working on this video game project? I know he's been like a figure in the public space since I was in high school, because... One of my fucking friends was, like, a backer of his game, apparently. So, like, how fucking long does it take him to put out this shitty fucking game, bro? My house for any reason. I had no social life whatsoever, and I had no one that I could call a true friend. A lot of people warned me a that they decade? could see my mental health deteriorating, Jesus, and that I was exhibiting man. a lot of self-destructive behavior, and I just ignored all of them. I was lonely and depressed and miserable and getting worse every year and doing nothing to make any of it better, and ignoring all of the warning signs that were being given to me. Is the game even out yet, or is it still when like in beta? Your psychological and social needs that badly for that long, you eventually become so desperate for social interaction and positive affirmation that you become willing to have inappropriate interactions you shouldn't be having, as long as it's fulfilling the social needs that have gone completely unmet for years. Acknowledging all of this was step one. Step two was determining what I would have to change about my life in order to repair the damage that I had done to my psyche over the past 10 years. <laughs> so I decided to just step back from game development for three months to just work on myself and try to develop a more healthy lifestyle. I started seeing a therapist. Uh -oh. I started leaving my house. Guys, put a space between the T-H-E and rapist and you'll get what you're paying for. And going outside and interacting with other human beings. I experimented with hobbies that don't involve the use of a computer screen. I found a much better work-life balance. And most importantly of all, I made friends. I developed a social life. I made meaningful connections with people my age. That made a bigger difference than anything else. I no longer feel so desperate for social interaction that I'd be willing to have inappropriate conversations just to fill some gap in my life. 
I feel like I've removed the weaknesses and vulnerabilities that enabled this entire situation to happen in the first place. It's worth mentioning that sometime after this entire controversy started, two images started to circulate. These images are fake Discord screenshots depicting interactions between me and children that have never actually happened. Uh, these images were either created in Photoshop or... Yeah, most of the... Dude, you can't trust Discord fucking screenshots because you can literally just fucking inspect Element anything. Yeah, unless there's like an actual screen recording of you clicking on the name, showing the fucking ID, refreshing it, and scrolling through the messages... Discord DMs are the easiest fucking thing to fake. Not e not even that. You could easily just make another account and message yourself. It's so easy to fucking fake Discord DMs. Made by an impersonator using my username and avatar. This isn't the way that people speak to other people. This is the way that you write dialogue when you're trying to make a comical image for the internet to laugh at. These are not real. Another piece of information I would like to address would be the claim that I was grooming this girl ever since she was nine years old. Uh, that's not true. Apparently, she sent me an email seven years ago. I'm assuming it was just typical fan mail. I always respond to every fan who contacts me, so I must have replied and said something like, hey, thanks for your kind words, glad you like the game. But just the fact that she had contacted me when she was nine, and then later she contacted me again last year, somehow magically transformed into a narrative that I had been grooming her for seven years straight. No, that's not what happened. A nine-year-old sending an up. email? Uh, I had an email when I was nine. But, even though I didn't harm a child, even though I didn't traumatize or victimize anyone, I do feel that I've made mistakes that I need to apologize for. I allowed myself to deteriorate into a person who was making... Griffin got groomed? Oh, no. Horrible anyway. decisions on a regular basis. That not Bro, as long as the chick was hot, I wouldn't have cared. I would have gladly been groomed. Not only harmed me, but also the people <laughs> around me. Real talk. By making some incredibly stupid... Dude, I feel like every guy, if there was like an attractive like 21-year-old and you're like 14, would gladly be fucking groomed. Careless remarks during conversations... I sure as shit would have been. ...I should not have been having. I created a huge... Because I don't know if it was just me, but like whenever I was like in high school and middle school and shit like that, it was always like the uh, girls and like the grades like way above me that I found like the most attractive. Like when I was a freshman, bro, like I was thirsting over most of the seniors, not like people in my own class. So I don't know, man. I feel like that's kind of natural for guys. completely unnecessary scandal and made myself into a figure who is so controversial that people are afraid to be associated with me or have any kind of connection to my game. What if a fat a result, chick grooms you? I said as long as she's hot. Otherwise, I have an issue. Then it's rape. People who enjoyed contributing to the project had to quit. YouTubers who enjoyed playing the game had to stop. Companies had to sever all ties with me. And a lot of fans were deeply hurt and upset. I'm sorry for having stupid, inappropriate conversations I never should have had. I'm sorry for neglecting myself until I created problems for everyone around me. I'm sorry to all of the people who I ignored when they warned me countless times that my behavior was becoming more and more self-destructive. And I'm also sorry for one other thing. After this whole controversy started, people started targeting anyone associated with me or my project for harassment. People even targeted the girl that I spoke to, spreading misinformation about her and spamming her with horrible images. It's one thing to screw up your own life, but it's another thing entirely to screw up so badly that you bring hate and abuse and harassment into the lives of others just for being associated with you. I am deeply sorry for that. <laughs> I just hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I don't really care. Well, now that I've owned up to what I did wrong and established that I'm not a groomer, where do we go from here? Well, I don't think that three months of self-care are enough to magically fix every flaw I've ever had. I'm sure I still have plenty of room for self-improvement, but I'm doing a lot better mentally now than I was before, and I think I'm ready to get back to work. I'm going to continue releasing updates for the game, and I'm going to continue releasing videos on my secondary channel. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, I mean, if the 16-year-old girl is saying that he didn't groom her, you know, all they talked about was shit that's, like, just inappropriate, that's not grooming, bro. Like, it's just weird. You shouldn't engage in that type of behavior. It's just not a good idea.
it's creepy, but it's not criminal. I don't know. I just don't really give a fuck at this point. This type of shit happens every other day at this point. Yeah. I'm not personally invested in any particular party. I understand that there's probably going to be less people contributing to the game, less people playing the game, and less people supporting the game, but I just have to live with that. No matter what kind of numbers I have, whether it's views or downloads or income or anything else, I'm still going to keep working on the game. It's too important to me for me to ever give up on it. There's a lot I would like to say about the current state of the Andere Simulator and the future of the project, but that's not what you click this video for, so I'm just going to write all of that in a blog post and link to it in the description. Yeah, he's an idiot. That's for sure, man. Like, as soon as it gets sexual with, like, an underage fan or some shit like that, it's like, eh, you know, you probably should just stop. You should just stop. He's a weirdo. I don't really think that constitutes grooming, though. Just in case it wasn't already clear, I just want to firmly state that I don't blame the girl for anything that happened. And I don't want anyone to harass her or make fun of her in the comment section or anything stupid like that. So if that's what you were planning on doing, don't. Over the years, there have been a lot of other controversies as well. Some of them I never addressed at all, and others I attempted to address, but I just mishandled it and botched it and made things even worse. So eventually, I'd like to make a video, kind of like this one, where I actually address those past controversies properly. I can't guarantee when it will happen, but it is something that I do want to do in the future. Yeah, I wouldn't bother at this point. With that said, there is one false accusation that I think is relevant enough to address now rather than later. I don't want this to turn into a long, rambling video, so I'll make this quick. There are a lot of people who are under the impression that I advocate for abolishing the age of consent and replacing it with a sex license. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, what the fuck is a sex license? <laughs> Bro, what does that even mean? <laughs> no, that is not true. What is a sex license? Uh, ten years ago, in 2014, I had a debate with someone about whether or not age should be the sole determining factor in deciding whether or not to judge someone as an adult. I argued that just because someone has blown out an arbitrary number of candles on their birthday cake, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that they are competent enough to make certain life-changing decisions. If you want to drive a car, you have to pass a driving exam and earn a driver's license. So I thought, <laughs> what if it worked the same way with becoming an adult? What if there was some sort of exam or test that you had to pass in order to be recognized as an adult and authorized to make certain purchases and decisions? Dude, we need that for voting. Well, if you think about it for like two seconds, you can immediately identify like a million problems with that concept. And that's because it's not an idea that I put any thought into. It's not some deeply held personal belief that I will die defending. It was just a random hypothetical thought experiment I came up with ten years ago while I was being contrarian towards someone in an argument. But sadly, that's just one of dozens of random offhand remarks. So wait, what's wrong with what he said? Is that once you turn 18, you have to, like, take a fucking aptitude test in order to prove you're actually a fucking adult? I don't see an issue with that. Like, is that a problem? I, I don't really know how that's controversial. Like, just because you magically turn 18, you're not mentally mature? Like, is that, like, a controversial statement? Like, do people think you just metamorphosize the second you turn 18 into a fully functioning adult who's ready to handle all the responsibilities that come with it? Like, I don't really know how that's a big, uh... How that's, like, a big fucking controversial statement. Like, I, I don't fucking know, man. For the years that have been screenshotted and used to paint a completely inaccurate picture of who I am and what beliefs I hold. So I think that when I eventually make a video to address past controversies properly, I should also clear up a lot of misinformation and misunderstandings as well. For now, though, I've said everything that I wanted to say. Dude, we need a voting license. You, you should have to pass a basic Thank civics you. test in order to vote. For being willing to hear me out. But I'm sure that'll be considered racist, dude, because, you know... Even though Joe Biden says that poor kids are just as smart as white kids, 
I'm sure somebody will say that that's racist, bro, because only white people can pass that test. <laughs> oh, oh my God, bro. It's just the fucking jokes write themselves. They fucking write themselves constantly. All right, so I saw there with the five. Jeffrey Epstein, when he found out Stephen Hawking wanted to visit the island. All right, let me rewind it. This must be some kind of a joke. Ashley. What made you think I would ever allow a cripple into the seven, for fuck's sakes? Ashley, don't look at him, look at me. This must be some kind of a joke. <laughs> Ashley. What made you think I would ever allow a cripple into the seven, for fuck's sakes? Ashley, don't look at him, look at me. Yeah, The Boys was good, but I fucking hate, and I mean hate, the fucking Australian guy, Butcher or whatever his fucking name is. I cannot stress enough how much I fucking hate that guy. Holy shit, I just want him to die. Like, they fucking baited you with the fact that he was going to die from popping too many fucking whatever doses of the compound V and he doesn't, it's like, Oh my God, just fucking die already, dude. No, I don't mind the actor. I just hate his fucking character. I absolutely fucking hate his character. Uh, Bill Hurd with a 10. I remember when Chris Pratt had controversy and someone argued he's far right and used his father-in-law as an example. He was a conservative governor, so I searched him up. It was Arnold. (laughs) Wait, really? (laughs) That's fucking weak. What's wrong with Arnold, bro? But that's the thing is these fucking retards go like, oh my God, he's conservative. Kill him. Like, you know, they can't see past like basic partisan politics. It's fucking sad. It's really fucking sad. God forbid you disagree with somebody. That's not allowed. HTM 101 with the five. The creator of Skullgirls was betrayed by his friends and has IP taken from him. He's now suing them in hopes he wins. There's a video on it. Big ups. Didn't the Skullgirls game have a lot of controversy recently when they basically removed like the big titties and ass and they made the game like super PC or whatever the fuck? Didn't they make that game, like, super, like, PC or whatever and, like, tone down the sexuality and stuff? I remember hearing a controversy about that. They removed the art book that people paid for. Yeah, game developers in the West are just massive fucking L's these days. It's sad. Um, Let's see. We'll watch this and then I'm probably going to hop off. Steam Awards. Trash. I agree. The Steam Awards are trash. Oh, yeah. FYI, guys. The uh, Alex Jones game is available to purchase now. Here. We'll do a quick shill for base game of the year 2023. There you guys go. Make sure to uh, go pick up a copy for uh, 1776. No, nah, Steam approved it, so it should be good to go. Should be fun. But yeah, the Steam winners are fucking terrible. Game of the year, I mean, that's given. Best VR game, don't care. Labor of love. See, a lot of these I feel like are ironic because there's no fucking way that Red Dead Redemption 2 wins labor of love. (laughs) Like, Come on, bruh. That online is dead. They haven't updated this game in forever. Did it release this year on PC? No, it did not. Yeah, that, that's a fucking meme winner, 100%. 
Uh, best game on the deck, I agree. Well, probably the best game on Steam this year. Uh, Lethal Company, I don't know what the fuck that is. Outstanding visual style, I'd say that's fair. Most innovative, that's another meme one, absolutely. Uh, best game you suck at, uh, I think Liza P probably should have gotten that, but whatever. Best soundtrack, Last of Us has a good soundtrack, so I can understand that, but I would have given it to something else. Uh, story rich, sit back and relax. Yeah, I guarantee you people voted for this as a joke. Because of the fucking loading screens. Holy shit, man. This game is getting fucking butchered. 27%. No way. Wait, no way. This just won. Let's see. If trolls are the reason behind this title winning, it just shows how stupid trolls are and why I hate them. Yeah, sarcasm. That's what I think, too, is people just voted for it as a joke. <laughs> I mean, because, dude, what's more innovative when it comes to gameplay than fucking loading screens, right? I think it was an ironic vote, but, you know. What's up, gamers? Drew Kaskot here, talking today about the Steam Awards. And yes, I actually have to put quotes around that because these are a complete mess. Everybody is laughing about the winners because they just make no sense. Freaking Starfield won awards, Last of Us Part 1 Remake, Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, straight up, it's just clearly a big troll moment for the internet. Yeah. But let's talk 100%. about that. 100%. Hi. Hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe. I mean, I didn't other. even bother voting in the fucking Steam Awards because I don't give a fuck. But already... So let's just, before we start to dig into the very angry reactions to it, let's take a look at the winners themselves. Game of the year being Baldur's Gate, that makes perfect sense. But once you start to go past that top chart, these are pretty strange. Why? Best Steam Deck game being Hogwarts Legacy. I mean, almost every single one of these, you can tell that people picked just to be silly. Oh, that's right. Dreamcast guy didn't buy Hogwarts Legacy because he dated a trans woman. I forgot about that. Yeah, so of course he's going to claim that one's bullshit because it's transphobic, dude. Labor of oh, Love. Oh, I forgot Red about Dead that Redemption shit. Too. Yeah, you know the game that got no update? Really, lol? Yeah, hold on. Let's see. I have, there's like a reference to it. RGT mentions it on a podcast he was on with Dream. I ran a poll on Twitter earlier today asking me which topic you I mean, you want to show me that, please hit that subscribe button. Until a few, like five years ago, I dated this girl. She flew in to see me. It was out of tell you guys what, what the truth is behind this and how I feel about this. Remember, this is just my opinion at the end of the day. If you have a different opinion. We're not going to go into J.K. Rowling's beliefs, the sort of stuff that she says, but let's just say she's a polarizing figure for a lot of people, and a lot of people don't like her. Now let's go to Hogwarts Legacy, because that's what we're here to talk about in this video, is the actual game. Because recently, you've been seeing a lot of talk on the Twitter sphere about boycotting Hogwarts Legacy, about you know getting angry if people seem to be excited for hogwarts legacy this that or the other strictly because RGT of the creator is of what? the franchise a hoarder? he sold Rowling his collection because, like i said she has some beliefs that a lot of people don't like i get it you know it's, it's, that's totally normal it's a totally normal reaction she said things that even i'm like all right that's a bit much you know, tone it back a little bit you know, tone it down let's calm down everything will be okay but here's the problem because now we're all starting to you see all these these, these high profile twitter checkmark journalists hopping on the bandwagon we're not going to talk about hogwarts legacy i sent for my iphone where was that iphone made it's not what about it. it's not a straw man argument it's called keeping it consistent but we won't get into that and, and now, now it's a whole big sort of you know burn the witch movement with this game everyone's freaking out about it okay so let's, let's break everything down here and show you yeah guys he sold his what, collection to phoenix I resale my opinion at the end of the day if you have a different opinion sound off in the there's a video below, on it subscribe button, pretty button. good anyway, so let's get into it okay a lot of people are upset about this game and the, the, the buzz around the game because of the fact that this is a jk rowling property okay so they don't want to support jk rowling because of the things that she said before okay i understand that here's the problem with that though jk rowling is a businesswoman at the end of the day you honestly feel like the game sales are okay this, this woman is a made woman she's made tons potter ip in a roundabout way you're, you get money up front from this 
Of course she did. This bitch seems like a pretty crappy businesswoman, but I guarantee you they're supported by the company who got her to license off him and the people who worked on the game. Because that's engine developing people. All these hundreds and probably thousands of people, the marketing team, this, that, and the other. I, def I, I guarantee Alan, they probably hate her. They probably hate everything that comes out of her mouth. Maybe some people are like, okay, that's a bit too much. Maybe some people ever. That's got nothing to do with me, or maybe it does have something to do with me, but there's nothing I can really do about it. So I need to make this game. I need to create this game so that I can earn a paycheck. You see, the, the, the money, the monetary aspect isn't going to do shit for them. It's about the people that are creating the game. And so you want to hurt the people, probably thousands of people that are creating this game because you don't like JK Rowling? You know what? That's okay. And I'm, I'm sure you are surprised that I just said that. Why would RDC say, you don't want to support something? Don't support it. It's not that big of a deal. The problem, though, comes from idiots on Twitter. Looking forward to the game. You're the, you're, you're the worst person in the world. That dude who, who did the stuff in Germany with Jews and stuff like that. I mean, this, this game. And that's what they do. They go into Twitter and they can buy whatever they want. Maybe they're able to separate the art. But they're able to separate the art from the artist because maybe they grew up watching Harry Potter. Maybe Harry Potter got them through a tough time in their life where they felt like an outsider. They felt like Trying a to get they to that part. And Harry Potter gave them the strength to know there are people like them out there who, who have a common interest in stuff like that. I'm going to take something that I was on a podcast um, a few days ago with. Uh, Here it is. Here it is. This is a. All right. Uh, uh, Mooch. Uh, Mooch's podcast. Shout out to Mooch. And um, we actually talked about this topic. And I think Max and I, Dreamcast guy and I, had the perfect thing to say about it. Because we both had very differentiating opinions on it. I pretty much said, you know, I'm going to check out the game. I'm looking forward to the game. And Max said, I'm not going to check out the game. I'm not going to look forward to the game because he has a lot of friends that are, are transgender. He's dated transgender people. And he didn't think it was fair to them. <laughs> there you go there you go it's not fair dude oh my god it really puts fucking suck dicks in an olive garden bathroom in the perspective man it's no patches clearly these are trolls <laughs> Some of these definitely deserve their spots. Best game with friends, lethal company, absolutely. But some of this stuff, most innovative gameplay is the part that everybody is discussing the most. <laughs> Look, I don't like Starfield. I think the game is mediocre at best. But even if you do love the game, you, you gave it a seven point five, bro. Are you? What do you mean you think the game's mediocre at best? You gave that shit an eight out of ten, basically. Are you freaking kidding? Best soundtrack, The Last of Us Part 1. Yeah, that's not at all an accurate freaking summation. But let me... Dude, The Last of Us soundtrack is really good. Let me actually take a look at some of these reactions, because... What the fuck is he talking about? Everybody is just laughing. Like, love or hate The Last of Us, The Last of Us has a very good soundtrack. Think about the fact that... I guarantee you this motherfucker was soying out over the last of a soundtrack when the game originally came out. I'd put money on it. These just truly make no sense. And a lot of people are hyper-focused on Starfield because it's definitely the one that people picked purely for the chaos of it. Look, man, as the resident Starfield defender, no. Uh, look at this. It's kind of sad because it looks like Starfield was probably just a troll vote. Yeah, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online wins major Steam award for continuously supported by developer. It hasn't seen a single update since 2021. Yeah, so, uh, it just seems like this is silly. I do laugh about the fact that freaking Bethesda is just choosing to embrace it. Hey, thanks for all that support. We won most innovative gameplay. Oh my gosh, people are saying this game is better than sleep medication. Uh, okay, so this is actually a tweet I wanted to look at. It, it's a couple in a row, and I think it brings up some interesting points about why. Yeah, didn't Halo Infinite win Player's Choice as well? That's pretty scary, the year that that came out. So, <laughs> at the Game Awards or whatever. Uh, Majora Jeff with a five. Hey, Griff, can you? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, Bill Herb with a two just came back from my holiday in the Florida Keys. Nice, dude. That's a really cool area. It's a good place to go visit. I've been there a few times, but it's really nice, especially this time of year. And Majora Jeff with a two is RGT Nintendo Prime. Uh, I have no clue. Maybe it's a second channel. No idea. Cosme with the two. Uh, seven inches. That's pretty big. Especially for a trans person, right? Majora Jeff with the two don't like Starfield. I thought he loved it. Yeah, he gave it a seven point five, so he didn't hate it, you know. But to be fair, everybody it seems like the longer they think about Starfield, the more they dislike it. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. 
And Emmanuel with the one. You're broke! Gross. You're fucking poor! Yeah, you're gonna have to slob all over a bunch of bananas if you keep that up, bro. It's the only way you're gonna get any money. Why popular votes, as fun as they are, as good as they are, they can quickly go off the rails. This is why public voting for awards needs to be vetted in some way. Now why? Who fucking cares about awards? They're completely, completely inconsequential. Who fucking gives a shit? Now, this person is definitely saying it's not that these are ill. New generation with the two. Have you seen the Quarter Rings RC car channel? Yes. That motherfucker has like tens of thousands of dollars of like little toy cars. Either, either, it's either pretty subscribe, wild. donate, or get the fuck out. Bill Herb with the uh, five either, either, gifted either membership. Subscribe, donate, ghost, or get the fuck Appreciate out. Appreciate it. Either, either, yeah, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Or, you know, fake. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. There does need to be some taste test. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. At least slightly on the rails. I may disagree with the Game Awards 90% of the time, but having an educated board oh, choose God. The is a better way than random gamers. No, there is no such thing as an educated board. They're a bunch of fucking hack journalists. Fuck off. So, yeah, it, it's always about who trying to find cares? that Who cares? Why do you fucking give a shit about who wins an award? These people are such fucking dorks, bro. Oh, my God, the award should go to someone who deserves it. It's like, it's a fucking piece of plastic that they stick on a fucking shelf. The real winner of the award is the person that gets the most fucking cash money. That's it. Who fucking gives a shit about some stupid fucking statue? Alan Walk 2 sold like shit and won a ton of awards. It's not going to fucking help the game. It was still a flop. Like, bruh, stop needing people to validate your purchases. It's fucking corny. Happy medium between... Big corporate event and fan chosen polling because, yeah, this is uh, just purely fake. Red Dead Redemption has not been updated in years. Starfield has to be an early April Fool's joke. I don't even need to clarify why it doesn't deserve this award. Last of Us soundtrack is great, but it's a port from 2020. All the finalists were robbed. One of my biggest issues is that games have been ported that year are eligible. I didn't for even vote in every these because I don't fucking care. Regardless of how old they are or what they actually are, ports need to be treated differently. Second year in a row that soundtrack has been sniped by a late port. Now, this is a good point. Stuff like Hi-Fi Rush, which you can actually see here as no. the best soundtrack. No. All of these have better soundtracks. No. Now, I like the Last of Us Part 1 soundtrack a lot, but... No, Hi-Fi Rush's soundtrack was not good. Persona's soundtrack is horrific. I don't even know what the fuck that is. To say it's better than Hi-Fi Rush or... It is like better that. than Hi-Fi Rush. Because just on the premise that The Last of Us has acoustic guitar versus fucking electric guitar, it automatically wins in my book. Like Pizza Tower? Like... <sighs> I will agree with the fact that this is just silly. This is people picking it just to be goofballs. Now, a lot of people are talking about the fact that the it reason automatically that wins Starfield just for was aspect. selected was definitely just a protest vote to be ridiculous on purpose. Because right now, the game is absolutely hated. It's absolutely getting <laughs> yeah. destroyed. It's now under 30% on Steam. This is one of the highest budget review failures of all time and you know what as a person that's played a lot of starfield uh the game definitely deserves the hate it gets in fact one of my best friends uh she is playing starfield right now for christmas her husband got her an xbox uh, shout out to chelsea she is trying to play starfield and she beat the main campaign and she's doing all the scarlet uh justice what do they even call the space cops i completely forgetting she is just growing to hate the game more and more. But even if you like the game, you can't say it's innovative. You cannot say that the game is innovative because at the very least, it's derivative. It is just another basic Bethesda project with a lot of loading screens put into it. This is the main joke people keep saying. You can cry about this, but it's true. Video games suck, but 75% of Starfield is just loading screens. What a breath of fresh air. It's true innovation that only Todd Howard and his team of ge Absolutely. geniuses could craft. Do you know how much <laughs> freaking time you have to ponder while playing this game? Yeah. Exactly. This you can understand the meaning of life in between a fast travel. 
this one is definitely the funniest. People are literally writing articles about how this is just such an obvious hijacking of the Steam Awards. Who cares? Start the one's most innovative gameplay. Why do these fuckers care, bro? If it's a meme vote, it's a meme vote. Who fucking gives a shit? It's not like Steam's cutting Bethesda a million dollar check and saying, great job. Award for 2023, I've got over 120 hours in Starfield, and never once did I feel like the game was innovative with its gameplay. Everything has been done before and done better. I enjoyed the game, but innovative? Nah. So, at the end of the day, I think Trolls stuff like this is still important. I still think that this is people trying to, in their own silly way, shine a spotlight on what they want to be better. Gamers really only have a couple ways to voice our dissatisfaction. Of course, let's see. So, Majora Jeff with the five awards mean nothing. The only thing that matters is if you enjoy a game or not. That's don't tell anyone on the internet that, bro. You know, you need constant purchase validation, apparently. You can't just enjoy something yourself. You need everyone else to acknowledge just how much you enjoyed it as well. And they have to share the same opinion as you or else they're wrong think and fucking enjoy. I don't know. It's horrible. People are just so obsessed with needing like constant validation on stupid shit. Like a fucking award for a video game that no one takes seriously. Who has any sort of actual sensibilities. Majora Jeff with the five never played Starfield before though. What makes it a bad game? So if you've ever played a previous Bethesda game, think about like a uh, Skyrim or Fallout Four, with three times the loading screens, uh, empty, soulless, boring open worlds to explore, quote unquote, copy pasted assets, boring storylines, boring side activities. And a new game plus mode that basically makes new game plus completely pointless. It's just very bland. I think that's the best way I can, but there's just nothing special about it whatsoever. It's just recycled, copy pasted garbage that's ridiculously segmented and soulless. Uh, I saw the five. We'll check it out, man. Of course, there's vote with your wallet. Nah, it's not the typical Bethesda RPG. Choosing not to buy a game. Bethesda has good games. It, Skyrim, Oblivion, Fallout 4, Fallout 3. I think most people agree those are pretty good. I do believe that loudly complaining, as goofy as that is, does still get hurt. I think that, really, Bethesda is getting a wake-up call that they've never experienced before. They're actually hearing for the first time ever, hey, it's I got not my, just that uh... your games are glitchy. It's not just that you don't release enough stuff. It's straight up the fact. Speaking of video games, I got my uh, graded copy of Final Fantasy XIII 2 today in the mail, which is pretty nice. So now I have a graded copy of thirteen. 13 2 and i have copies of lightning returns being graded right now so hopefully i'll be able to get a 9.8 on all three of them and then i'll have the full set but yeah it's pretty nice 13 and 13 2 both have the foil cover so they look really nice next to each other that starfield is not good enough this is not a title that deserves the Bethesda logo. The branding just doesn't fit the product. Uh, I can try to take a picture of it real quick. You know, I think that Starfield is an it's interesting hard to spot because I do a thousand percent believe it's going to get the cyberpunk treatment. I think in a year or two, no, it won't. maybe three years. Absolutely, it be... will not. Starfield will never get the cyberpunk treatment because CD Projekt Red did something that Bethesda has never done once, and that's fix their own game. <laughs> the only cyberpunk treatment that Starfield could ever potentially have is from the community directly through mods. Bethesda has never fixed one of their own games in the single-player genre. Only Fallout 76. All right, let's see if this works. Mm. Yeah, that should be good enough. Y'all can see it close enough. Hold on, let me try one more time. Alright, that's good. 
Unfortunately, 13-2 is in the old Wada case, so it kind of looks weird next to each other, but it's still pretty good. Fantastic. Starfield is going to get the No Man's Sky complete I can always rebuild re -slab that it makes if it I need actually to. fun. Less load screens, more customization, Just space combat bucks. actually meaningful. Maybe... Oh, God. PMS Jordan, that's the one that got it. Oh, is that the fucker that... Uh called for Tanga transphobic for saying that women are women. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the average Twitter user. Of course, they're a Starfield simp, too. Makes sense. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can actually land directly on planets without five loading screens or boring fast travel. But until that happens... To claim yeah, women or women is a is controversial good. statement. To claim this game and is age. innovative is just flat out Watch your privilege, bigot. untrue. But these have just been some off the cuff thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, gamers. Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. All right, here you guys go. I'll show you all the games. There they are. You can see the foiling, it's hard to capture it on camera. But you can see the foiling on the front cover, kind of. Like, the whole cover is foiled. So it shines in the light and has kind of like this rainbowish effect when you, like, move it in the lighting. So they're really cool next to each other. But, yeah. Both are 9.8s, A-plus seal, which is really good for uh, 360 games. Because the seals on 360 games are usually very fucking loose. And the plastic is super fucking easy to scratch. So, the copy I have in of Final Fantasy XIII and grading right now, the original, is better than this one. Seal-wise, so I'm thinking it might get a 9.8 A++, which would be really fucking sick. And then I have three copies of the Steelbook version of Lightning Returns being graded as well. So, I'll, uh, I'll show you all when those come in, but it'll probably be a while. But yeah, and then I have 27 games that I'm going to send in as well, too, to get graded. But yeah, I think these look really fucking sick, though, next to each other. Thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe. I like the graded video already. games, and man. Police. They're pretty cool. Keep dreaming. By the way, sorry for disappearing for a week. I am going to be a little bit hit and miss here on content for the next 10 days or so. Um. There's this person I've been uh, dating, hanging out with a bunch and stuff like that. She just had a major back surgery. So, uh, honestly, uh, oh, I'm just going to Oh, shit. Say bro, Dreamcast guy blew her back out so hard she had to get surgery. That's what's up, bro. Hell yeah. This is a big old beefy boy. On the couch and play a lot of cozy games with her. Stardew Valley. She's never seen Mario Odyssey. Play some Mario Kart. Kind of hang out with her until she's uh she, she's gonna basically be bedridden for two months so uh, my focus right now as much as i love you guys is making sure my friends uh spirits stay high but i love you guys very much and uh i'll, I'll be i'll still be uploading stuff whenever i can for sure just early january it's gonna be a little bit spotty well it's the perfect time to take time off from content creation because january ad rates fucking suck Griffin is mad jelly. Nah, I'm happy Dreamcast guys out there winning. This is the thing, bro. I'm never upset when other people are successful. Because if you're envious and jealous of other people's success, you're never going to have any of your own. So I am very happy for Dreamcast guy that he got to blow out a chick's back so hard she needed fucking surgery. <laughs> That's fucking based. <laughs> but yeah. Good for him, man. I want Silent Hill graded. That's expensive, bro. That is an expensive game to get graded. Graded games are so... Well, it's hard to find old games in really good condition. Like, bro, I had to buy 17 copies of Borderlands 2 before I finally got one copy that was worth grading. I bought 40 copies of Titanfall, and only 10 of them did not have rips in the plastic. Like, it's really tough to find games worth grading, even for newer stuff. So the old stuff gets real expensive. 
Like, old GameCube games are fucking insane. Like, I want to get Pokemon XD at one point, and that game is, like, in a 9-4, like, close to two grand, and they sell. So, pretty wild. All right, so, we'll take a look at this real quick. Oh my god, ew. Earth, this is the earthquake that just hit Japan, by the way. Oh, that's what caused the earthquake in Japan recently, guys. Absolutely. All right, so I think I have it copied. Paste, yes. Oh, fuck. Um, fuck me in the ass. All right, hold on. Now. For Luigi, I feel like oh, oh down here. Oh, no, no, that would have no. been nutty. Oh no, I think that would have been nutty. <laughs> oh my god, that's the sound that came out of Dreamcast guy's friend when he blew out her back. Bro, he followed through on the movement there. Hold on. That was some impeccable form. Bro, he spiked that shit right at the fucking peak propulsion. I knew he was tilted, but I didn't know he was that tilted. Jeez. Why is there a female mannequin in between them? So they can know what a woman looks like? Like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. Uh, Majora Java the Fun. Never played Bethesda games before. I mainly play Nintendo and Blizzard games. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to play one, I would play Skyrim. That's my favorite, personally. And I sell it with the five best games I can think of made a comeback or Final Fantasy 14 for sure. No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk. Yeah, Final Fantasy 14. They clutched the shit out of that game. It was like a complete flop to now the biggest MMO in the world. So I'm glad Final Fantasy 14 is great. I just don't have time to play an MMO like I should if I was going to play an MMO. Major Jeff with the two. Why is it blurred out? Because it's age restricted, pretty much. And Fluffle Nugget with the two. He didn't smash that controller. He super smashed. Oh my god. <laughs> and Cyber with the two. Any tips for someone getting into cybersecurity? I mean, if you want to get into cybersecurity, do the uh, certifications and such. You can just look up like cybersecurity certifications, do like the short classes or whatever you need to do to prepare or just go over the material and get as many certifications as you can that are relevant to whatever like kind of field or industry you want to work in or topic you want to specialize in. And that will help pad your resume dramatically over just having a degree. But you don't even need a degree if you have enough certifications. So that's where I would start. Research the different certifications and different areas of cybersecurity you're interested in, 
get some of those on your resume and that should do really well for you in finding a job. It's one of the most in demand fields right now. So lots of opportunity and it pays very well. Fucking sick. Why would you do that with so many people watching? Yikes. Fuck. Dude, who the fuck cut his hair? Holy shit. All right, that wasn't that bad. At least he wasn't an ass about it. He just got pissed. Yeah, for the grab a little bit oh there. My. Oh my god, I literally just wanted through again. Uh, Norden with the six. Any update on Hippo Zone? I remember watching your videos on him like four years ago. Do you know what he's been up to since? Um, I don't know exactly what he's been up to. Apparently, he is back on YouTube and I think Twitch as well. But no, I haven't really kept up with him, man. The last I heard is he had like his run in with the law and then he kind of like, I guess, got back on his feet and started like working and stuff like that. So I don't know. Hopefully, he's doing well. But. I don't really know, like, what exactly is going on with him. I don't really keep tabs on him anymore. After the whole run-in with, like, his legal issues and shit, that's when I, like, backed off. Because I, I don't really like to kick people when they're down like that. But, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully he's doing well. You're better. Sword character, sword character, sword character, sword character. <laughs> Bro, those are expensive headphones. Those are like 1600 bucks. It's nice. I thought about getting those at one point. Sennheiser HD 820s or something like that. I think that's what they're called. Have I got a receding? No, I don't have a receding hairline. So my hairline has always been kind of shit ever since I was a kid. But no, my hairline has not receded at all. I still have a very thick, full head of hair. Like, I don't have, I guess, male pattern baldness in my family at all, really. None of the, like, men in my family, my grandparents, my uncles, my dad. no, Nobody I know in my family is bald, so I should be fine. What hairstyle do I have? Uh, I have a basically, I guess, kind of like a fade on the back and the sides, but it's like a three, so not super short. And then just kind of like a, I don't know, like I just brush my hair over to the right. So my hair is kind of long up top, but not super long, maybe like an inch long up top. I don't know. So pretty short hair. I don't like high maintenance hair. I just want to get out of the shower, dry it, and I'm done. Oh my. <gasps> nah, it's not a comb over. Do I fade my balls? Nah, that shit's as uh, bare as a baby's ass. Dude, I put nair on my balls to make sure they're extra smooth. You know, the dog in the background. The music, bro. <laughs> player 
dude. Shit fucking player, dude. Shittiest fucking player I've ever fucking seen in my whole fucking life. Then why did you lose, bro? Fuck. How I'm on blog TV possible? with my fucking I'm hands a up. Question. How do you lose to that guy? That guy was so fucking. Oh, uh, somebody's trying. What the fuck, bro? Somebody's trying to get into my burner Facebook account. Are you fucking shitting me? Worst. Playing terrible. I should have low percent three stock that guy. How in the motherfuck am I somehow oh God, worse dude. than him? In what fucking universe is it even possible? Create a new password. No, nigga, I lost to trash. I lost the trash. <laughs> All right. Some fucker in Afghanistan was trying to take my burner Facebook account that I used for Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Why? Dude, there's nothing on it. I don't even have a singular, like, fucking friend added on that Facebook account. It's literally just used for Facebook Marketplace. Why would you even try to hack that? Gets the back air as Moffs did. Up air catches it. Jen taking home. Oh my God. Zena Benya is not happy. Benya is not happy. Yeah, the Taliban's trying to get my fucking burner Facebook account that I buy Pokemon cards with. Oh no. <laughs> Shit. I love people that do that. Dude, I'm so pissed, like, in the new Smash Brothers games, when you fucking uh, side B people with Bowser, it kills you first before them, so you can't suicide them anymore. Like, in the older Smash games, if you used Bowser's side B, grabbed them, and then jumped off the fucking map, they were on the bottom... So it would kill them first, technically. Then you would die. So they got rid of that because people used to spam it because the fucking corny-ass Smash pros bitched about it. So, yeah, that fucking sucks. I'm not sure what just happened. Um, what just happened? Um... God forbid you have fun in a fucking children's fighting game. Yeah, liksom, uh, oh, oh, second kick. Oh, footstool no. Footstool no. Steal rounds. Not no. Not so no. Oh, I'm probably not. Nej. Nej. Oh, the crazy reaction from Bupa. Yeah, I have a little rage from Bupa. You can still win, dude. Why are you fucking raging? He had 80 fucking damage and you... Oh, never mind. Uh, Cyber with the two is getting a BA in cybersecurity away. No, it's not, uh, but just make sure you do uh, certifications as well. It's not a waste of time. It'll help you get a job. But make sure you pair it with certifications as well, because the certifications are what it's going to get, like, 
basically allow you to demand better pay because if people need your specific area of certification slash expertise, they're going to pay you more versus just general knowledge. Majora Jeff with the five, always love doing side B off stage with Bowser. Same here, man. It was fun. Catching jumps. I love playing Bowser in pretty much any Nintendo game, but yeah, I love Bowser in Smash. We have the Thunderlit Pop He's so fun right to play. Reasons. Not end the stock right now. Oh, well, yeah, good call. You're... Yep. Not even commentator skirts. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Okay, yeah. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on in Smash. Keep pay attention, but... Oh, nice up Smash. Isn't really working out that well because uh, Oh almost with the read. Kirby can definitely Oh, oh the no! God damn it! Damn you suck. Fuck this game! God damn it! Oh, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we got we got some naughty words coming out. Oh, oh naughty words! As far as avoiding the up smash, yeah, getting the there again. There. Try to go for it. Oh. 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 Dang, Dang, he yeah. is upset. Dang, I don't think he meant to do that. He's looking like he, he didn't mean to down B. I think he was trying to like either get back on stage, but not like on the platform. I think he was trying to get like on the ledge oh, or something. Like off, off yeah, stage he looks pretty upset. I thought this was pure fact oh. game to win. Now it, it's... It's looking like Elgin brought this all the way back. No, watch for the up. Don't read Don't read Oh, oh shit. Oh my god, Kira! Man. Kira! Oh. oh. Fuck! Kira, what did you. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> <laughs> he practiced for oh, months for that oh, moment. No. Drink his milk, he's heavy, you know. Oh, boomerang! Boomerang corner? No way! No way! Ooh. <laughs> he's gonna shit! Ooh, that was not the no. loss he wanted. He's You're got a bad man! What's the edge guard situation? Careflex forced off stage. Oh. He's gonna force him off. What has Tater got? The big scuba found him! Is that it? It is! Kira. <laughs> <laughs> Mecha Koopa just landed over and over and over again. Level up your joy. <laughs> there is no joy. No place to go. Kira obviously kicked off at that. Or maybe down smash. Oh, he got no. Oh my god. Oh ew, dude. This guy needs to be struck down. Oh my god, that is one of the gayest things I've ever witnessed. Watch. <laughs> Ugh. Dude, did you see Dude, what is that? That stupid dance? What is that, Nate? Nate, did he what is floss? that? Did he floss? No, that stupid... What is that? The whip? The whip. Nate, Nate? I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah, but that down smash poking was actually tragic. Damn, man. All right, guys. Oh, wait, shit. Genesis King Revival, the two Bowser and Captain Falcon are my mains. See, I like Ganondorf more than uh, Captain Falcon, but it's kind of the same energy, you know? Because Ganondorf's punch can't be broken, unlike Captain Falcon. So if you can time shit right, you can fuck people up with Ganondorf. But yeah, either one is really fun. Ganondorf and Captain Falcon basically have the exact same move set. Just Ganondorf has slower and more, I guess, power behind his moves. But yeah, good choices, man. But I'm going to go ahead and hop off, guys. Have a uh, wonderful Thursday, everybody. Appreciate y'all hanging out. Big ups to everybody in the chat. And I will talk to everyone later. Peace out, everyone. Jesus fucking Christ. Shut up. Shut the fuck up, you fucking virgin losers. God damn. Go get George a life. Jeff Go outside. Two. I showed you that video because of the last Find meaning in your clip. fucking Appreciate life. It, because they're angry right, and can't I'm get going pussy. Bye, so guys. I have to do it to shut them the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck all of you. Shut the fuck up. God damn it.